Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We are back in the Thunderdome. Good morning. I'ma make them suffer. They some bombs. Hey. All of my haters are sipping fake G. I'ma make them suffer. They some Running from me like a title. Good wave. morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a Zeus hate came out of nowhere. It did. Talking next level, take another stare. Yeah. Talking about me like I really care. Huh? Right. I hear you haters out, leave you on a chair. What you say is make believe, sipping on that fake tea. Talking kind of crazy when you on that fake tea. Now it's time to take it back. You know I'm your favorite. You know who I came with. All Good your morning, ladies and gentlemen. Me. Happy Friday. You know what we came to do? I'ma make them suffer, they some pawns. Yes. All of my haters are sipping fake tea. Yeah. I'ma make them suffer, they some pawns. Yes. Don't be drinking that fake tea, ladies and gentlemen. Fake tea. Somebody needs to tell me that it's that dog. They thinking they the Jetson, but they Flintstones Overdosing on these lies like it's nothing wrong yeah. About to make them hang it up like it was a phone No dial tone, send them Good straight to voicemail yeah. I don't recognize this number, send them straight to hell yeah. Yeah. All my haters gossip cause they losing sales Now you're trapped, don't blame me, you in that cell yeah. Now you trying to play me, sipping on that fake tea Sounding real shady when you on that fake tea I heard it through the grapevine, and you know they dropped it Good down morning, ladies. Haters on my timeline. Haters on my timeline. Anyone can get fine. All right, let's get this show started, ladies and gentlemen. You know what we came here to do? Happy Friday. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's like Deja Vu. It's me, Zeus. It's Deja Vu when I'm running up these racks. I'm like the Terminator screaming. I'll be back. It's Deja Vu when I'm out here flying first class. It's like every week I gotta take out the trash. I'm on top of my game, head of the class. You can tell that I made it. Look at my grass. Cars in the garage with tanks full of gas. I play the game so raw, I won't finish last. Sitting in my living room, screaming how we made it. This is how it's supposed to happen when you're rich and famous. The algorithm turned to a maniac. Yeah, yeah, I guess we going viral cause my zodiac. I got all these numbers on my spreadsheet. Benjamin Franklin is my favorite. And if they use my extra me, they me. They don't get replies. In the Thunderdome, I am your host and I am your pilot, and you know exactly why we are here. But before we get started with that, let's take care of some housekeeping items. Number one, happy Friday. We survived another week, right? Let's go. All right. Many of you don't know who I am, and so I like to introduce myself. I go by the name Zeus, or some like to say uh, Triple H. And why do they call me Triple H, ladies and gentlemen? Well, it's quite simple. The first H stands for honest. I'm the most honest person on social media. There's nobody more honest than me. Listen, you might as well pretend like my hands are sitting on a stack of Bibles while I'm doing this show, all right? That's the first H. The second H, ladies and gentlemen, is because I am humble. There's nobody more humble than me. Listen, if I get it wrong, I will be the first to apologize. It just turns out I haven't been wrong lately. I don't know why that is, but that's just how the cookie crumbles, all right? And then you've guessed it. The last and final H stands for... Uh, because I am and will always remain the most handsome. 
All right, now many of you are familiar with what we do over here on this side of town, on this side of TikTok. What we do over here is very, very special. What we do is we hold our friends on the right, especially their cult leader, Donald J. Trump, accountable for their dirty, disgusting, filthy deeds, as well as their crimes. And believe you me, when it comes to dirty, disgusting, filthy deeds and crimes, our friends on the right, uh, they've hit the jackpot. They got a bit of a monopoly on it, all right? And so what we do here, ladies and gentlemen, is we don't coddle these people. We don't sugarcoat the facts. We give it to them straight, straight with no chaser. Uh, and it's actually designed that way to make sure if you're in a good mood, like, you know, a lot of these Trump supporters who like to pretend like they're winning. If you're happy, it'll make you feel sad, all right? If you're, if you're hungry, you won't be so hungry after you get done listening to this show. And so uh, I just want to give you Trump supporters a, a bit of a heads up. Thank you, Lady Rima. I just want to give you Trump supporters a bit of a heads up. Uh, if you are, as my good friend, Brother Swervin likes to say, factose intolerant, that means you're allergic to the facts, you might want to leave this live and go on about your miserable mornings, all right? And hang out with those fake TikTok hosts. Those fake Christians, those liars, those seditionous, treasonous traitors, these fake TikTok lawyers, you go hang out with them because they'll lie to you. I won't lie to you, all right? Because it's going to get dangerous in here. It really is. But I know you don't believe me, so that's why I always say this. You don't got to take my word for it. Listen to your leader. If you're not happy here, then you can leave. As far as I'm concerned, if you hate our country... If you're not happy here, you can leave. Mm -hmm. If you're not happy in the U.S., if you're complaining all the time, very simply, you can leave. You can leave right now. Come back if you want. Don't come back. It's okay, too. But if you're not happy, you can leave. Boom, boom, boom. If you're not happy in the United States of America, you know the rules. Pack your bags and leave this country. If you want to make America great, great again, if that's ever a thing, I really do firmly believe it starts with a mass deportation of MAGA. These are the these Trump supporters, ladies and gentlemen. They are on the ropes. Um, they're terrified. They know Donald Trump is guilty. And yet and still, they're out here on TikTok uh, lying their rear ends off. I've never, ever met a Trump supporter that, number one, could honestly tell the truth about what they understand is happening in this country right now. Every Trump supporter that I have spoken with or I've listened to, they seem to be uh, unaware of Donald Trump's criminality. They seem to be unaware of his immoral, his unethical behavior. Yet and still, they'll get out here and try to say that President Biden is somehow a terrible president. I'm still waiting for them to give me the dirt they have on Joe Biden. No Trump supporter on this planet has ever been able to produce any dirt on Joe Biden. And I'll go one step further. Even if you were to have dirt on Joe Biden, how do you justify uh, saying this is why Biden is bad, but then at the same time you say, but this is why Donald Trump is good. Joe Biden was not in a hotel room with questionable with a questionable woman that wasn't his wife. Joe Biden never did anything like this. So where are the Trump supporters at? All right. That we're saying that, uh, you know, you know, you know, Donald Trump was in this room behind his wife's back while she had her son, Baron. You know, uh, he was in the room with this woman that these Trump supporters continue to denigrate. They try to try to make Stormy Daniels seem like she's such a terrible, evil person. But MAGA has no answers as to why was Donald Trump with this woman? Any Trump supporters out there got the answer? Why was Donald Trump with this woman? If she's such a terrible person, you, you're quick to throw stone. No, 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 Karen. Allegedly, Karen. Come on up here, Karen. Come on up here and talk to Big Zeus. Because you're, you, you know, I believe you're a woman. And I want to know how you can continue to cast stones at this woman 
because this is the lifestyle she chose. And you believe in this country, people have the freedom to do whatever they want with their life. Thank you, Karen, for coming up here, Karen. Karen, you're a Trump supporter, correct? Yes. Okay. Do, do you understand why I am completely uh, upset with a lot of Trump supporters about this? Because I would imagine you're a Christian, right, Karen? Yes. And and so we don't judge Stormy Daniels for her, her lifestyle, right, Karen? Heck no. Okay. Uh, uh, but what about Donald Trump? Can you explain in what context the Bible would say it's okay for him as a married man to be with a woman like Stormy Daniels in a hotel room? Um, I just don't I get don't it, Karen. I just don't get it. Well, when we're at a point to choose the lesser of two evils for our country, you have to make a few allowances. It's, okay. not, it's not as big of a deal as the crap going on in our country right now. Okay, Karen, let me ask, let me break it down to you. Okay, so we have things going on in this country and you and I can agree. These are things that if you follow American history, they're gonna go on even after you and I pass, right? These are gonna constantly be things going on. We're talking about conduct and behavior of a person. You have children or you're married? I have children and I am, uh, my husband passed away. Okay, all right, I'm sorry to hear that. But let's get back to when you and your husband were together. Would, is there ever a situation in your, in your marriage where you believe that it was acceptable for your husband to be in the room with a, an adult film star in a hotel room without your permission? Is that um, ever, would that ever be acceptable in your, in your, in your marriage? No, but my first husband was probably in one with a few of them because <laughs> he know. was not a very good guy. I, 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 okay, I get that, but I'm pretty sure he was a Trump supporter, right? Let me. So, so you and I can agree that a, a married man should not be in a hotel or in a suite room with a woman like Stormy Daniels behind his wife's back. You and I agree on those things. Yes. And yet, you're still going to vote for a man that you know did that to his wife. Think about I Melania. I don't know that he did that. I don't know that he did that with his uh, with her. Well, can I ask you a question? Sure. You knew though he paid Michael Cohen that money back in reimbursement, right? Has it been proven that he paid it back? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you're following the case, but let's just let's just go down this path well, the, and, and, and let's just assume I'm, can you let's just make believe. Can we do a little role play and let's make believe. Let's just say for the sake of this show, I'm right. Okay. He did pay Michael Cohen that money to reimburse him for paying Stormy Daniels the hush money. What kind of man would pay a woman that he had never slept with? that amount of money um he celebrities and people do it all the time to get rid of people who extort money from them mm. and i believe in the trial it was found that stormy daniels first lawyer of vonti or it started with an a avenatti avenatti who's yes. in prison right right but 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 karen karen I oh want well you to, cohen I, was in prison okay okay but, and i love it when you go and do these things all right because you still are overlooking the bigger issue why would donald trump be in the same room with a woman like stormy daniels and a guy like michael cohen who you believe are very unethical and immoral people. What does that say about Donald Trump hanging out with these characters? I mean, honestly, your husband comes home to you, hey, I didn't do anything. And then, you know, the people that are saying he did these things, one of them is going to jail. One of them is, a, is an adult film star. I mean, think about that. Okay, for a so, so what exactly during this um, trial has put trump in the room with her except for her testimony um so you know donald trump has employees right at his various businesses correct you're familiar with his businesses right he has many yes yeah 
Um, and so some of the employees have came in during this trial. I think there's been a total of like 18 witnesses. And they've confirmed that, number one, she was in Tahoe with him. They've confirmed that she did come to one of his uh, businesses to have a meeting with him and that she was there when he invited her over for dinner. That's not that's not hearsay anymore. This is stuff that his employees have confirmed. So let's not okay. let's well, not let's, let's say... not beat around the bush, right? And this is and I want you to assume someone's telling you this about your husband. And your husband is sitting there saying, Baby, I didn't do anything. But you got all these people that are coming out saying that your husband did this, you see money is missing out of your, your bank account. How do you how do you continue to act like this didn't happen? We are not electing a pastor of our church. We are not electing someone for their moral fiber. We are electing a president who's going to stop some wars, who's going to secure our border, Karen? who's going to make us energy independent again. We uh, don't give two shits about Stormy keep it clean, Daniels. Please, Karen. Karen, can you? I'm Karen. sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, Karen. I'm sorry. Okay, Karen. Okay, I get it. So what you're yeah. doing right we now, Karen? We don't care Karen, about that. Karen, we don't what care about that. Karen, what you're doing right now is you went and got political. And I don't want to get political because I got to get on with the rest of my show. I was just curious if you had the courage to tell your husband or your partner, cheating on me is unacceptable and I don't care what's going on in this country. I won't tolerate it. But it seems to me like you won't say that. And what you're doing, Karen, Karen, and what you're doing is you're giving, if you got children, you're giving them a pat. You're telling your children it's okay for you to be cheated on by a man or a woman because if they're securing the borders and if they're cooling inflation and if they're keeping us out of wars, I am willing to put up with that kind of conduct in my household and I won't say a word because you're doing something I like. And I believe that's what you are saying. Am I right? That's between him and Melania. I'm not Melania. Yes, you are. I don't are. make the no, choice. No, no, actually, Karen. I don't Karen, make that Karen, choice. Karen, Karen, you are Melania in this example. That's what I was trying to help you understand. And what you've basically said to me is you're willing to allow your husband to steamroll you in the relationship because, hey, he's securing the borders. He, he can go hook up with any woman he wants in any hotel that he wants, and you won't say a single thing. That's kind of what I've gotten from you, Karen. All right. <laughs> well, if that's what you get from yeah, my answer, did, then you have well, a fantastic day. Sir, okay. Well, can I ask you? What, do you want to clear that up? Do you want to clear that up? I'm not Donald Trump's wife. I don't. I, that's between him no, and no, his no, wife. No, 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 no. I'm Karen, not making Karen, a moral Karen, okay, judgment. Okay, Karen. I'm, on I'm here him. to let you know, Karen. You actually are Donald Trump's wife. You're his property, and that's how he thinks about you. And you're saying that's okay. So do you want to fix? Saying do, that's do, okay. okay, well then, it, well then, say what is really okay then, because I'm gonna drop you and gotta get on with my show. But I'm just curious, cause you're a woman. I'm assuming you have daughters, correct? I do. Okay, so what you're telling your daughters is, hey, your man can go out and do exactly what Donald Trump did. You're doing that. No. No. <laughs> It's no, the lesser of two evils. It's the lesser yeah. of two evils, Karen. Come on. Our country because... is worth a lot more than a porn Jesus store Christ. and a hotel room. All yeah. right, Karen. I'm going to let you get back in the audience, and I'm going to ask that you just sit there and listen to this special broadcast. All right, Karen? Because there's going to be Okey a little dokey. bit. Okay, I thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you know what we got to do? Karen gets our first round of, you guessed it, uh, booze and shame. We're going to give Karen some booze and shame, ladies and gentlemen, because... She knows right and right from wrong, but she likes to pretend like she does it. All right, Karen, thank you for actually not, you know, cursing on the show and being all nasty. But I got to give it to you, Karen. Oh, nasty, Karen. It never seems to amaze me the amount of excuses Trump supporters give this guy right here who's currently sitting in a courtroom fighting for his life. It never ceases to amaze me. Okay, so let's get on with today's topics, ladies and gentlemen. And Karen, this one is for you. Why would it be in Donald Trump's 
books thank you for the gift why would it be in donald trump's books karen adult film star stormy daniels attorney is convinced the power behind buying the silence of his client is donald trump and the proof is right there clark brewster appeared on the news yesterday posited why the 45th president is culpable in the criminal hush money case the question is why was he behind the nda did he orchestrate it did he cause Michael Cohen, okay, and Daniels to pay off? And did they conceal the record keeping that particular truth? Notably outside of the courtroom uh, yesterday while speaking to reporters in the corridor, Trump said, I have the only illegal NDA. So Trump acknowledges that there is an NDA. This matter. And, and to that point about what's corroborative, now that we're getting towards the end of this trial, uh, do you think that there's reasonable doubt that Trump committed these crimes? And is Stormy Daniels ready for a potential not guilty verdict? Well, Stormy is uh, ready for whatever happens here. I mean, she is uh, very resilient. She's a strong uh, woman, and um, she she's quite impressive in my view on how she's dealt with these issues. Uh, but you're asking if there's reasonable doubt. The question is, um, was he behind uh, the NDA? Did he orchestrate that? Did he cause Cohen to pay her off? And did they conceal in their way in the record keeping uh, that particular, uh, the truth? And I don't think there's any doubt about that, is there? <laughs> I mean, who else was doing it? Was it just something fun for Michael Cohen? And, uh, why would it even be in Trump's books if he didn't, uh, he wasn't the one that was behind it? I mean, it really, there's no plausible, sensible conclusion that could be reached other than uh, he did it, uh, he caused Cohen to get it accomplished, and they dealt with it from a bookkeeping matter in a way in which they thought they could conceal it further. But uh, all Trump. So, Karen, what we're getting at is this is in Donald Trump's books, and there's really no other way to explain why Donald Trump was paying this money to a woman he claims to not have known, especially when there was no retainer agreement with Michael Cohen. There's really no excuse why Michael Cohen had to go to prison and his CFO had to go to prison and Donald Trump was signing these checks while president of the United States. Remember, Karen, he said he divested himself, but he really didn't. Those checks were being sent via FedEx. So, Karen, I hope you understand what's going to happen next. All right. We pretty much got Donald Trump. We really got Donald Trump at the scene of the crime. And it's just a matter now of time in terms of him being convicted. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in giving Donald Trump and his supporters once again what they deserve. Another round of booze and shame because the evidence is right there in their face. And yet and still they continue to try to make excuses for this guy. <laughs> And now I want to make sure we address another elephant in the room. All right. Many of you, 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 you know that Michael Cohen was yesterday on the stand and you got, you heard the media basically saying, oh, Michael Cohen, he got demolished and all of this other stuff. And this thing is going to get tossed out. I think that's what I seen Donald Trump uh, post on his platform. <laughs> all right. This Alvin Bragg is going to throw out this case because of the way Michael Cohen uh, was, you know, uh, the way that he was, uh, you know, beat up during cross-examination. But I want to make sure you Trump supporters understand what may happen next because all is not lost. All right. We expected this. We understand Michael Cohen uh, has a history of lying. But we also understand this guy, Donald Trump, is probably in the Guinness Book of World Records as the biggest liar. So, okay, we got two. We got Michael Cohen, who we are saying is a liar. We got Stormy Daniels, who we all are saying, you know what? She's she's got different motives. Maybe she's being fueled by greed. And then the other culprit is Donald Trump, right? The one that we all know is also a liar and a criminal. So we got three criminals. <laughs> this is so. We got three criminals, pretty much, all right, involved in this scheme. Actually, four, because Alan Weisselberg. And listen to what Glenn Kirshner, my good friend Glenn Kirshner, says in terms of how Alvin Bragg can easily clean this entire thing up. Listen up, MAGA. On both direct examination and cross-examination, that you lied 
in the past. Oh, yes, sir. Here we go. Redirect examination of Michael Cohen look like? Might look something like this. Mr. Cohen, you lied many times in the past. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. In fact, you admitted in this trial on both direct examination and cross-examination that you lied in the past. Yes, sir. In fact, you told some of those lies to Congress. Isn't that right? Yes, I did. And you told those lies to Congress while you were under oath. Isn't that correct? Yes, sir. Now, who were those lies designed to benefit? Who did they help when you lied to Congress? Donald Trump. Did those lies benefit you? Did they help you? No. Why not? Well, they didn't help me because I got caught lying for Donald Trump and I went to prison for it. Now, Mr. Cohen, what would happen if you lied to this jury in this trial? I would go back to prison. You want to go to prison? No, sir, I do not want to go back to prison. Okay. Now, you said you really want to see Donald Trump held accountable for what he did. Is that right? Yes, sir. In fact, we heard some of the tapes of you saying that you want Donald Trump to go to prison for what he did. Is that right? Yes, sir. So then, let me ask you this, Mr. Cohen. Do you think there's a better chance that Donald Trump will be held accountable for what he did if you tell this jury a whole bunch of lies or if you tell them only the truth about what Donald Trump did? If I tell them the truth about what Donald Trump did. And over the course of 14 hours or 15 hours, however long you ended up testifying in this trial, is that what you tried to do? Tell this jury the truth about what Donald Trump did? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, that is just some of what we might hear on redirect examination by the prosecutors of Michael Cohen. You know, everybody in Michael Cohen's situation, somebody who was committing crimes with the defendant presently on trial, everybody is going to have to admit, if they want to be credited by the jury, that they were committing crimes. They were up to no good. They were doing wrong. They were lying. They were cheating. They were stealing. They were covering up. Yes, they were doing it all. But they were doing it all together with the charged defendant. Or when there's a hierarchy here, right, they might have been doing it at the direction of the bigger criminal fish, Donald Trump. You hear that, MAGA? <clears throat> Thank you, Glenn Kirshner, for, for breaking that down. <laughs> Number one. If Michael Cohen really wants Donald Trump to go to prison, MAGA, let's break this down. What we're saying is when, when Alvin, you know, when they get up there and they, and they do redirect, they're going to have to help Michael Cohen flush this out. So you want him to go to prison? Yes. You do understand that if you are lying, Michael Cohen, he's not going to prison. Michael? Yeah, we get that. So what are the chances Michael Cohen is lying on the stand right now, making this up? If we all can agree Michael Cohen doesn't like Donald Trump and wants to see him in prison, MAGA, think about it. What are the chances Michael Cohen went and took a home equity line of credit out to pay a woman that he ended up having to go to prison for paying and, have, and never slept with? What are the chances that he just did that out of the kindness of his heart? Even Hope Hicks said it didn't make sense, MAGA, and this is why Donald Trump is guilty. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in giving Donald Trump and his supporters that are still out here pretending like this didn't happen, all right, what they deserve. A round of booze and shame! Ain't no, ain't no man, there's no man on this planet that's going to pay a woman $130,000 just because he loves her. <laughs> Doesn't work like that. You know how many women out here would be getting $130,000 if that's how it worked? You guys are something else. 
Karen, I hope you're still out there listening to what I'm saying. All right, Karen. And you need to actually think about the example you're setting for your children, because, you know, the same the same things that you excuse and say are acceptable in Donald Trump. I promise you, you're going to end up having to deal with them in your real life. That's just how the universal laws work, Karen. You can't, no, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer. I know you might not be a religious person, but there's universal laws at work, Karen. All right. And when you open the door for evil like that, Karen, it's going to be right there. You ever came home and you seen some nasty evil demons sitting in your living room? Karen, I guarantee you, you got a couple of them sitting there, right? <laughs> Let's move it along. I'm trying to help these Trump supporters understand that there are universal laws at play right now. While they're sitting over there worried about securing the borders, the door for evil and corruption is wide open right there at your house. All right, and you've allowed that door to remain open, all right? Let's move it along. Let me sh let me slow you down. Uh, Ari Malber turns the tables on one of Donald Trump's lawyers. You should listen to this exchange, all right? Former President Donald Trump's payroll attorney, William Brennan, launched into a tirade on MSNBC Thursday attacking Michael Cohen the ex-Trump lawyer who is serving as the final and most significant witness for the prosecution in the former president's Manhattan hush money trial. Listen to this exchange because this is for those of you who love to focus on the fact that Michael Cohen is a liar. This is I believe I want this man to go down and rot inside for what he did to me and my family. Uh, as defense counsel, what are they trying to achieve there? And what do you say to the counter argument um, that if Cohen's story is true, uh, he did pay a high price for trying to be loyal to Trump, and it would be okay if he's angry as long as he still tells the truth. Well, Ari, this guy's a whiner, and it's always somebody else's fault. I think Mr. Blanche brought that out today. It's the judge's fault. It's the prosecutor's fault. It's the banker's fault. It's the loan officer's fault. It's Trump's fault. You have to remember, Ari, that the lies uh, are not... Uh, totally related, and uh, they don't begin and end with uh, Trump world. He lied about the medallions he lied about uh, to, to the IRS. He lied to his wife about the refi. He lied to the judge uh, uh, at a sentence. I mean, these things have nothing to do with Trump, and it's always somebody else's fault. He made some remark in that podcast, revenge is a dish best served cold. You know, there's another quote Sinatra for many years had over his bar, a quote saying, living well is the best revenge. Maybe he should have taken that quote because this guy is absolute damage goods. Blanche tagged him with that phone call. And that phone call is probably what's going to uh, prevent a guilty verdict here. And there's two interesting things about that, Ari. Well, let me slow you down. Uh, we were just discussing the phone call with the, eventually the DA's office, so we'll get to that. I did want to mention, you, you say that Cohen's been caught lying a lot, and we've been reporting on that. Um, but of course... If that meant that someone wasn't fit to have their day in court, you could have never represented uh, Donald Trump when you did because he's been caught in more lies than any public person alive, according to the Washington Post and other accounts. Well, I mean, that's uh, that's some type of political statement. I'm not here for politics. I'm not, that's not a political statement. We're talking about lies in court. He's on trial, and, and you know he's a known and busted liar. I'm just saying, I, since, you, I, since I, you're kind I, of way I, on Cohen. I don't... You hear that? You hear that, MAGA? You see how... We let you dig this ditch. I love it when these Trump supporters can show me that they know how to point out a liar and really bust them up, right? I love it when MAGA does that because then when we go ahead and say, now, now that you beat that person up and you made it clear that you know how to deal with liars, let's talk about Donald Trump. And, they're, and they literally just start to melt down right there. See, I get it, MAGA. Not only do you know how to point out liars, you know that deep down inside, you're also a liar. You're an immoral individual. And if I could go a little bit further, I would go one step further and talk about you and say, you know what, it, that, that lady that I brought up in my box that said she would excuse Donald Trump's nasty behavior, chances are she herself maybe have done what Stormy Daniels was doing, you know, because that's how this works. And that's why they don't want to speak on it. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what we got to do. Join me in giving these Trump supporters what they deserve, because once again, we know what's going on. Every MAGA accusation is truly a MAGA confession. Get them out of here! Karen, 
I hope you haven't been in a hotel before behind your partner's back, Karen. That's how my mind works, Karen. I'm going to be honest with you. You know, say you and I were dating Karen and, you know, this situation became a conversation at the dinner table and you were giving Donald Trump an excuse for his behavior. My mind would say, oh, so so so, <clears throat> so my wife has probably been in a hotel room like that before behind my back. I would start to think like that because, you know, I go there, Karen. So that's why I try to make sure you Trump supporters get your opportunity <clears throat> to actually clear this up and state where you stand on issues like this. If it's hard for you to condemn it, then that means most likely you're a part of it. That's how this works. Don't, don't I can criticize President Biden and I can criticize everyone else. But if it comes to Donald Trump, I can't say a word. That means you're guilty of it. And that's just how the cookie uh, crumbles. Uh, let's move on to our next topic. All right, here we go. Um, when it comes to rage of rural voters, liberals may not be asking the, the, the right questions, or I should say the white questions, right? <laughs> okay. All right. So, all right. Uh, the book authors, uh, Tom Scholar and Paul Waldman, have a new book out called White Rural Rage, and we've talked about that on our show before, on the show before, The Threat to American Democracy. It has proved controversial. There are two major objections, as I understand them. First, Scholar and Waldman may have misrepresented or misunderstood scholarship on the rural context. Second, their thesis, white rural voters pose a unique threat to democracy may be overstated and under supported all right is it rural or is it race is it rural or is it race it may surprise you to hear this <clears throat> but i'm neither a rural sociologist or a political scientist i decided i was in no place to give authoritative authoritative uh, assessment of these arguments then while i was groping around for what I did want to say, uh, Noah Berlatsky just went ahead and nailed it. Democrats struggle not with rural voters in general, but with white rural voters in particular. The white rural voters do not vote for the GOP because they are rural. They vote for the GOP because they are white. That's pretty much it, as one scholar argues. If you control for other factors, the difference between rural and urban voting patterns essentially disappear. Race is a much stronger predictor than things like income, religion, place of residence. Let's say that again. Race is a much stronger predictor than things like income, religion, or place of residence. That's why when they try to argue about the border, when they start trying to argue about Christianity, and when they start arguing about inflation, I never take my finger off that pulse of race because race has always been an issue in this country. Let's put that more anecdotally. I've known some straight up white stone cold racists in rural areas, but then I've also known some in the urban areas. It's not quite as simple as saying the white rurals are a bunch of races, but at least for some people, it's a straightforward enough syllogism. One, cities are the source of all of our problems. Guess what? Black people tend to live in cities. Democrats tend, tend to uh, run cities. Ergo, Democrats and everything they stand for are bad and wrong. There are variations on this theme. Illegal immigrants are overrunning our cities. Democrats let them all in. Therefore, or you know what they said, the pandemic, <clears throat> it's a city problem. Democrats run cities and liberals run health departments. Therefore, we're not interested in getting, you know, vaccinated or practicing social distancing. As with many white people, rural or urban, the supremacist elements of these formulas are more or less explicit. Depending on the individual and their community, it could be that rural whites are more prone to bias due to lower levels of education. But other than that, racists are racist, no matter where you find them. And there's more to this, ladies and gentlemen. But 
I bring this up because I think it's very important. When we uh, when they go around and they're talking about these poll numbers, which we all know are slanted to only make Biden look like he's not doing a good job when he is. The biggest issue in this country isn't the border. The biggest issue isn't inflation, the price of eggs and the price of gas. The biggest issue in this country is still race. And Donald Trump represents what they love racism donald trump represents racism that's why he's going to get votes that's why donald trump can sit in a courtroom in the middle of all these criminal charges and still get these people to support him get these people in congress to abandon doing their work for the american people and to go in the courtroom and show up on one of those two benches for donald trump and say right on even though you're guilty even though you're here being charged as long as you push back push promote racism and try to take away women's rights donald trump we're going to be behind you a hundred percent this is why these trump supporters are mad this is why they say barack hussein obama was the most divisive president it wasn't because of any policies that barack obama pushed through because presidents have been pushing policies since they've gotten into office but it definitely was the fact that Barack Obama was a handsome black man who loved, actually he looked pretty, he looked pretty cool in that tan suit. Right, ladies and gentlemen, he looked cool. <laughs> Make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen, racism is still an issue in this country and whether these Trump supporters want to admit it or not, that's why they continue to get behind Donald Trump. Because as long as Donald Trump pro promises them that white is right, they're going to continue to support his behind, even to the pits of hell. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in giving Donald Trump and his supporters what they deserve because they're racist and don't care about our democracy. Join me in giving them a round of booze and shame. How's that for your race baiting retribution? I'm not lying about it. You can you can go look it up. There's no other way to justify why you would continue to sit back and allow a criminal, all right, to, to be sitting in court in New York and say you could still support him. That's exactly what was going on in the Civil War when the South was trying to, you know, defeat the Union. We don't care if these people are criminals. What we want to make sure is that we can still engage in slavery. Yeah. Y'all don't need to go look up American history. This thing ain't over yet, all right? It really ain't. All right, let's go back into uh, some more, uh, more, more, more things that have been going on. How many of you saw the chaos that erupted after uh, MTG lobbed insults at Democrat lawmakers, fake eyelashes? Again, racism, right? This is racism on display. No matter how they try to make it look, this is racism on display, all right? Uh, at House Oversight Committee hearing, a House Oversight Committee hearing erupted into a war of words on Thursday when Representative uh, Marjorie Trader Green and AOC exchanged slight slights during a contempt hearing for Attorney General Merrick Garland for blocking the release of audio tapes related to an impeachment inquiry into President Joseph R. Biden. Let's listen to this exchange, ladies and gentlemen, if you if you mind, if you don't mind. Let's listen to this exchange, okay? All right, hold on, hold on, goodness gracious. Sometimes you gotta go to another link to make it work. All right. Here we go, here we go. This committee are employing uh, Judge Mershon's daughter. Please tell me what that has to do with Mayor Garland. Is she a porn star? Oh, Goldman, that's right, he's advising, okay. Do you do you know what we're here for? You know we're here. Uh, 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 I don't think you know what we're here president. for. Well, you were one talking about. I, know I, I think your fake eyelashes are messing up. No, I ain't nothing. Hold on, hold on. Order, Mr. Chairman. We do order you against the order of your committee. Order, please. There's a point of order. We have a point of order, uh, Mr. Lynch. State your so, so she wants to call out Jasmine Crockett's 
uh, she said fake eyelashes as if that's acceptable. But I do have a point of order, and I would like to, uh, to move to, to take down Ms. Green's words. That is absolutely unacceptable. How dare you uh, 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 attack the physical appearance of another bad. person? Are your move feelings hurt? Her words down. Aww. Oh, oh, girl, baby girl. Oh, really? Don't even play, baby girl. We're gonna, we are going to move, and we're going to take your words down. Thank I you. second that motion. So, so thank you, are. thank you, AOC. And l it wouldn't be right unless we heard from what uh, Miss Jasmine Crockett has. Miss Green for four minutes and 21 seconds. Mr. Chair, point of order. Who's, who's? It's me. Miss Crockett. I'm just curious, just to better understand your ruling. If someone on this committee then starts talking about somebody's bleach blonde, bad built, butch body, that would not be engaging in personalities, correct? A uh, uh, what now? <laughs> Chairman, I'm I make a, I make a motion to strike those I words. Don't, I don't think that's Hold a on. part I'm of trying it. to find clarification on what qualifies. Chairman, I motion to strike no those words. You said. We're not gonna we're not gonna do this. Like you guys earlier literally just voted to do it. You voted first, so you don't want to do it. I'll try to get clarification. Get calm down. Get her Jasmine. No, 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 because this is what y'all do. Wow, wow, wow. See, this is what happens when racism doesn't get checked until it ends up in Congress. Then you get these kind of eruptions going on. And I agree with Miss Jasmine Crockett. We got somebody in there that's bleach blonde, bad built butch body. Wow. <laughs> Go ahead, Jasmine. Six beans. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in giving MTG what she deserves. All right, because once you open that door, you you don't know what you're going to get, right? And she's getting it right back. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give her what she deserves a round of booze and shame. Oh, Alright, let's continue. Alright, we got a couple of quick updates and then we'll round the corner with this. Alright, first update is uh, Donald Trump was given the day off of trial for Barron's graduation and now he is heading to a Republican fundraiser. Oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen. Again, another example that Donald Trump really doesn't care about his children, right? But he'll go in the courtroom and lie and ask for permission to leave to pretend like he does. Only his Trumps, only his supporters believe he actually cares about his kids. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to go any deeper into that. Thank you, Belinda. But you know what we got to do. Join me in giving Donald Trump what he deserves. Another round of booze and shame. Oh, You're so kind. Next, uh, uh, we got another update about uh, uh, insurrectionists, or as Donald Trump likes to call them, uh, uh, he calls them <clears throat> uh, hostages. A January 6th rioter loses Republican primary for a West Virginia congressional seat. All right, this is an example of a loser, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, feast your eyes on Derek Evans, all right? A man convicted of entering the United States Capitol on January 6th riot lost a Republican primary for the House of Representatives in West Virginia on Tuesday. All right, so this is another example of MAGA taking another L. You know, this is so sick. The same knucklehead who tried to overthrow our democracy is all of a sudden interested in actually working for the same democracy he tried to overthrow. This is some sick and twisted stuff, ladies and gentlemen. Derek! Maybe you didn't hear Zeus when I was making the offer. Derek, you would fit in real good if you went to Russia. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in giving nasty, seditionist Derek what he deserves. And he probably calls himself a Christian. All right, he's not a Christian. He's a hypocrite. He's not a patriot. He's a traitor. Join me in giving him what he deserves. Another round of booze and shame. Oh, Bye, Derek. Oh, You're a lost cause. Let's wrap up 
wrap this up and then open up the boxes. You know exactly what we are here to do. Let's talk January 6th, all right? Now, many of you, you've been down this path with me before, and I, you know, I struck, sometimes I say, should I, should I not cover January 6th anymore on this show? Because it feels like we're just beating the same drum, but you know what? I went into my my good friend Angie's live this morning, and she had a MAGA demon in the box who was once again denying what happened on January 6th. So, because Trump supporters don't want to admit the truth about what happened on January 6th, we're going to keep beating that drum. Over 1,300 people have been convicted. 700 plus have pled guilty, ladies and gentlemen, and more continue to do so. Thank God for Merrick Garland and President Biden's DOJ. I promise you that's probably one of the greatest inventions of my lifetime, right? (laughs) So let's get into this January 6th nonsense, all right? You know, uh... You know, Donald Trump calls them hostages. Well, thank you very much. And you see the spirit from the hostages, and that's what they are, as hostages. No. You're not hostages the way he's trying to make it sound. You're hostages because you're in his cult, and you can't get out, MAGA. (laughs) Many of these hostages, they don't understand how they got into this predicament, right? How How did they end up in prison? Let Zeus tell you how you all ended up in prison, all right? You know what we want to do, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, If you don't mind, let's engage in a little story time. Let's go back in time, MAGA, to 2020, the year 2020. Were you better off then than you are now? No. See, in 2020, MAGA, we were in the nasty pandemic. You ever heard of that word, pandemic? Yeah. And you want to know who was the president during that time, MAGA? Let me show you who he was. All right. Many of you think it was Barack Obama. Many of you think it was Hillary Clinton. But it wasn't. Donald Trump was the president in 2020. What was going on in this country? Well, like I said, you had the pandemic. Uh, Millions of Americans' lives, they were being lost. What else was going on? Mm, The stock market, the economy was tanking. It was on its knees. If you were a parent and your children were going to schools, those schools were shut down and your children had to work, do their work at home with you. You, you, you most likely had to also work from home. And while this was going on, this guy right here was lying to the American people about the dangers of the pandemic in an effort to remain in power illegally. He came up with a scheme. Can you say scheme, MAGA? He came up with a nasty scheme to try to retain power, and it involved breaking the law. All right, now what was that scheme? A lot of Trump supporters don't like it when I I share it with them, but I'm going to do it. This was the scheme. It started with a big lie. It's a rigged election. It's the only way we're going to lose. It's a rigged election. It's a rigged election. It's the only way we're going to lose. Right? See, that was the seed of doubt that Donald Trump planted in the minds of his supporters, right? And so when the election results came out, we all saw what happened. There was no red wave. Instead, there was a blue tsunami and a big, big blue wall. Now, Donald Trump should have came out and conceded to President-elect Joe Biden, but he didn't. We all remember what Donald Trump did that night, ladies and gentlemen. We did, right? In case you don't remember what Donald Trump did, let me remind you. It's such a big night. You just take a look at all of these states that we've won tonight, and then you take a look at the kind of margins that we've won them by, and and all of a sudden, it's not like we're up 12 votes and we have 60% left. We won states, and all of a sudden, I said, what happened to the election? It's off. And we have all these announcers saying, what happened? And then they said, oh, because you know what happened? They knew they couldn't win. So they said, let's go to court. And did I predict this, Newt? Did I say this? I've been saying this from the day I heard they were going to send out tens of millions of ballots. I said exactly 
because either they were going to win or if they didn't win, they'll take us to court. So Florida was a tremendous victory. So what that is, is him not conceding. That's actually him watering that seed of doubt, okay, in the minds of his supporters. And then he goes one step further and he adds some fertilizer to that seed of doubt. 76,000 votes with almost nothing left. And all of a sudden everything just stopped. This is a fraud on the American public. This is an embarrassment to our country. We were getting ready to win this election. Frankly, we did win this election. You see how he did that? He just basically told his supporters that he won the election and they believed him. They became radicalized soldiers right there in that moment. They really believed the election was stolen. So what did they decide to do next? Well, you got to go back to the commander in chief, or as I like to call them, the modern day Jefferson Davis, right? And you know, his supporters, they're Trumpies, they're Trump loyalists. All right. And I call them his modern day Confederate soldiers. What, what happened next? Well, you guessed it. I'll tell you what happened next. Uh, Donald Trump uh, summoned them. All right. You remember how that happened, right? Here we go. Here we go. Attention, all Trump supporters. This is what Donald Trump said to you. You know, the ones that are calling themselves hostages. This is how you ended up in those prisons. I lost to Joe Biden, and I'm very, very angry. All right? So what I need for you to do, I need you to sell everything that you have, send the proceeds to me, and then I need you to meet me in Washington, D.C., at an event that I am hosting called Stop the Steal. All right? Be there will be wild. That was his invitation that he sent out to MAGA, inviting them to Washington, D.C. And so we all know what happened next, right? They all decided to cram in the back of these U-Hauls. Anything or anyone who has voted Joe Biden has uh, blood on their hands. All right, close your Chrome, uh, your Chromebook. Maybe you should close your Chromebook because <laughs> that's a lie. So his supporters got in the back of these U-Hauls, ladies and gentlemen. They crammed in the back of them like a can of sardines on their way to meet up with their with their cult leader, Washington, D.C., all right? I mean, you know there's no air conditioning in the back of these things, right? There's no air conditioning, but they had no problem getting in the back of them because all they wanted to do is meet their Lord and Savior, Donald Trump, in Washington, D.C., all right? And you want to know who was in the back of these U-Hauls, ladies and gentlemen? You know we got the pictures of them, right? I'll show you who was in the back of those U-Hauls. Look at them. You know when Donald Trump said, stand back and stand by, you know who he was talking to? The Patriot Front. The Boogaloo Boys, the Proud Boys, the Oath Keepers, these are Trump supporters, the racist ones, all right, especially, in the back of the U-Hauls, going there to, quote, take back our country. These are some sick folks, ladies and gentlemen. All right, and you want to know what's even more, you know, even more uh, upsetting about this photo. I'm going to keep saying it. It's the fact that they're wearing those masks. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. Isn't it funny that these supporters had no problem putting on that mask? But remember, during the pandemic, you would go into the grocery store, wherever you get your groceries, you go over to the produce section, and they were supposed to wear their mask, but they'd have their mask right here like this, right? With their nose still hanging out and the snot still coming out of their nostrils. You ever seen this stuff, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, sir, the mask is supposed to go over your nose like this, all right? That way you're not spreading it. I can't breathe if you make me wear that mask all the way up there. <laughs> all over the produce. Sir, uh, okay, you're willing to crash out in the grocery store about that mask. You really can't breathe. I'll take your word for it, all right? But then we get under this DC thing, and then I see you're wearing those masks. You see how I caught you in the lies, MAGA? It's funny how when it's time to be racist... 
It's so funny how when it's time to be racist, you can all of a sudden breathe through a mask. You're all a bunch of liars, I tell you. You're all a bunch of nasty, deranged liars. <laughs> all right, and these are the ones he's calling hostages, by the way. And so we all remember what happened next, right? When they got to Washington, D.C., all right, they met up with Lieutenant Marjorie Trader Green. There she is right there. And look at those shoes. And then you look at those shoes. That's the person that they're saying uh, planted those pipe bombs. And that's why many of us to this day believe that if you want to know who was doing the pipe bombs and planting them, we really need an investigation into Marjorie Trader Green. Because we all remember what she was saying on around January 6th, right? Everything. If we flood the Capitol buildings, flood all the government buildings, go inside. These are public buildings. We own them. We own these buildings. Do you understand that? We own the buildings and we pay all the people that work in the building. We finished with our meetings here at the White House this afternoon. We had a, had a great planning session for our January 6th objection. We aren't going to let this election be stolen by Joe Biden and the Democrats. President Trump won by a landslide. Call your House reps, call your senators from your states. We've got to make sure they're on board. We already have a lot of people engaged. Okay, stay tuned. Right, right. And so that's Marjorie Trader Greene encouraging her support, the Trump supporters to actually get in the Capitol building. Wait a minute, Your Majesty. We did not wear them because we could not breathe. We did not wear them because we are not sheep. Oh, so you're telling me, uh, uh, you're, you're telling me that you were a sheep. <laughs> this, 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 the logic. So Your Majesty, you put the mask on in the back of the U-Haul. Explain that. Was that because you decided to be sheep that day? <laughs> Your Majesty, you know what? I didn't want to do it right now, but I'm going to give this to you. Oh, You're sheep. <laughs> Basically, ladies and gentlemen, what Your Majesty just said to Zeus right now. Hold on. Let me get back to what I was saying. Basically, what Your Majesty just said to me is these knuckleheads right here, these are the ones you know, the, 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 the Patriot Fronts, the Boogaloo Boys, the Proud Boys, the Oath Keeper, and all of these other racist individuals that are wearing masks. What your majesty just said to me is they are sheep. Sheep for Donald Trump. This is some sick stuff. Sick. All right. And so we all know what happened after they were instructed to go inside of the Capitol building by Lieutenant Marjorie Trader Green. There was an exchange that took place in the White House between the president of the United States at the time and his vice president, Donald Trump and Mike Pence. Uh, Donald Trump goes into the office and tells Pence, guess what, Pence? Everything is in motion. I got my fake elector scheme in motion, and I got a bunch of my radicalized soldiers at the ellipse. All I need you to do, Mike Pence, is that thing you and I talked about. Don't you dare certify those votes for Joe Biden. Mike Pence says, you know what, Mr. President, unfortunately, I can't do that for you. Because in order for me to do that for you, that will require me to place you above the United States Constitution. A document that our founding fathers fought and bled for. A document that Americans to this day have fought and bled for. I can't do that for you, Mr. President. And Donald Trump, very angry gets into Mike Pence's face and his breath, they say it smells like cheeseburgers and Diet Cokes. You know what your problem is, Pence? You're a little too honest. And he called him the nasty P word, the same P word that you heard him use in the Access Hollywood tape. Mm. He goes to his security, he says, security, take me to the ellipse to be with my soldiers. And security says, sir, I can't do that. Those people are armed to the T. They got tactical gear. They got demon spray. Uh, they got brass knuckles. They got gallows. This is, these are, this is the, the most dangerous crowd we've ever had to deal with. And Donald Trump says, I don't care. Take me to be with my soldiers at the ellipse. Yes, sir. And so they ushered him to the ellipse. When it gets to the ellipse, he looks over and he sees a sea of red, white, and blue patriots for Donald Trump. 
Where's the FBI? I don't see them. Where's Antifa? I don't see them. Where's BLM? I don't see them. All I see is the sea of red, white, and blue patriots for Donald Trump. And Donald Trump says, well, it's now or never. Now it is time to encourage these patriots of mine who are at the Stop the Steal rally to engage in heinous acts of violence. Now it is up to Congress to confront this egregious assault on our democracy. And after this, we're going to walk down, and I'll be there with you. We're going to walk down. We're going to walk down. Anyone you want, but I think right here, we're going to walk down to the Capitol. And we're going to cheer on our brave senators and congressmen and women. And we're probably not going to be cheering so much for some of them. Because you'll never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength and you have to be strong. Mm. You heard what he just said, right? Hey, NBC, you heard what he just said, right? That was him encouraging his soldiers to engage in heinous acts of violence. And you know what they like to say? They say, well, Zeus, you skipped the part where he said peacefully. <clears throat> no, I didn't. That's not what was going on in the minds of his soldiers that day. These folks invested a lot of money. They invested a lot of time to be there. They brought weapons. They didn't bring that stuff to have no tea and crumpets. They brought that because they were willing to go to prison for Donald Trump. They were willing to throw their lives away for Donald Trump. And let's not forget this part of the, let's not forget these parts. And we fight. We fight like hell. And if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. So, let's have trial by combat. Mm. And we fight. We fight like hell, and if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. So, let's have trial by combat. And we fight. We fight like hell, and if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. So, let's have trial by combat. We will never give up. We will never concede. It doesn't happen. You don't concede when there's death involved. Yeah. We will never give up. We will never concede. It doesn't happen. You don't concede when there's death involved. We'll never give up. We'll never concede. We'll never do that when theft is involved. Oh, friendly guy, I'm going to open up the box. I guarantee you, you won't survive 10 seconds without losing your cool because you understand I'm the one telling the truth, and you're the one living in a lie. I'll see you in a few minutes, Mr. Friendly Guy. And so, do you all remember what happened with Ashley Babbitt? How many of you know who Ashley Babbitt was? Do you all remember who Ashley Babbitt was? Uh, this, is, this is a MAGA demon right here <clears throat> who had been fully indoctrinated, fully radicalized by Donald Trump. She read every single one of his tweets. She probably bought all of his merchandise. She believed the election was rigged. And she was at the Capitol on January 6th. Full of lies and misinformation. All right. And ready to lay down her life for her Lord and Savior, Donald Trump. All right. And we got Ashley Babbitt on tape, ladies and gentlemen, right before she did those things, all right? All right, listen to what Ashley Babbitt was saying. District, why don't you worry about your own goddamn district and the shit that's going on in there? You are a complete, re you, you, I'm telling you right now, I'm putting all you on notice. Every single one of you politicians in California, Gavin Newsom, Jerry Brown, Maxine Waters, Duncan Hunter, what the hell is Kamala? Where is Kamala? Talking about ISIS like KKK. We got this mind. A sea of red, white, and blue patriots for Trump. You're right, RC. It does sound like those Russian bears. 
And we all remember what happened to Ashley Babbitt, right? Remember this moment? All right, we all saw it on national television. This is the moment that Ashley Babbitt laid down her life for Donald Trump. You see that? That's the moment right before she laid down her life for her, her for her Lord and Savior Donald Trump, her cult leader. Getting that ultimate MAGA reward. And so what happened after Ashley Babbitt lost her life? You would have thought Donald Trump would have been proud of her, you know, and definitely put her in the Hall of Fame, whatever that is in MAGA. But what happened after Ashley Babbitt lost her life for Donald Trump? Do you all remember what happened? What did Donald Trump do? Does anyone know what Donald Trump did after one of his foot soldiers lost their life in the battlefield for him? Do you know what he did? MAGA, do you know what do you know what Donald Trump did after Ashley Babbitt lost her life because he spread that nasty big lie? Well, let me tell you what he did. Information that stands out to me is that Donald Trump was passed a note after one of the rioters was shot in the Capitol and was made, made clear that this person had been shot, this woman had been shot in the chest. And the valet says that he offered no reaction upon learning that. He kept sitting in the chair watching the violence unplay, unfurl on TV. A non-reaction at the death of Ashley Babbitt. A non-reaction at Ashley Babbitt losing her life in the battlefield for him. This is why I tell you, Trump supporters, this is some sick stuff that you've gotten yourselves into. Sick stuff. He doesn't care about you. And yet you're still going to continue to go vote for him and, and throw down your lives for him. You're not hostages unless you're talking about the fact that you're stuck in that cult. But to the rest of this country, you're traitors. Ladies and gentlemen, this is January 6th, the way we all remember it. Not with those silly footage that's being released by Mike Johnson. This is the real January 6th. This isn't a peace, this wasn't a peaceful protest. This wasn't a tourist visit gone awry. This wasn't the FBI and the ghost buses. BLM or Antifa dressing up like MAGA. This was not that. This was an event planned and organized by Donald Trump and his inner circle, acted out by his supporters who were radicalized by his big lie and they don't want to admit it. And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I have another update to give you in terms of what has happened recently to one of his soldiers. A North Georgia man who was arrested more than three years after the insurrection at the United States Capitol on January 6th has pled guilty. Arrest warrants were issued in January for Zylus Z. Hamilton of Blue Ridge, charging him with knowingly entering any restricted building or grounds without lawful authority, disorderly conduct in a restricted building, disorderly conduct in a capital building, parading and demonstrating or picketing in a capital building. According to the warrants obtained, all right, Hamilton posted on Facebook that he was at the Capitol on January 6th and rushed at the police officers. A Facebook Live video on his page showed him inside of the building. He was also spotted on several surveillance cameras inside of the inside and outside of the Capitol building. The U.S. Department of Justice obtained copies of his phone records, which showed him talking about being inside during the insurrection. Quote, I'll die or do 20 years before my kids grow up in this country. These people are trying to create, he said in response to someone telling him to remove his post so that he would not get caught. Quote, honestly, a window was broken. We could have burned that place to the ground, he wrote in another message. Former President Donald Trump didn't promote the violence or condone it. We made that decision ourselves. That's what he said. Hamilton also claimed that he was maced tear gassed and uh you know hit with rubber 
pew pew in the shoulder. Hamilton pled guilty to disorderly conduct and illegally demonstrating. Prosecutors agreed to drop two other misdemeanor charges in exchange for his guilty plea. Hamilton faces up to six months in prison and five years of probation when he gets sentenced in August. He is one of dozens of Georgians arrested related to the January 6th insurrection. Ladies and gentlemen, this is January 6th, as we all know it. A domestic terrorist attack planned and organized by Donald Trump and his supporters. With that, now that we have another uh, MAGA demon being brought to justice, join me in giving him what he deserves. A round of booze and shame! <laughs> And you know what we got to do, right? Because they've been brought to justice. Uh, they've been arrested. They've been convicted. And they're on their way to being sentenced. You know exactly what we got to do to these so-called Confederate soldiers. Let's send them off the old-fashioned way. by addressing the heinous attack on the United States Capitol. Like all Americans, I am outraged by the violence, lawlessness, and mayhem. I immediately deployed the National Guard and federal law enforcement to secure the building and expel the intruders. America is and must always be a nation of law and order. The demonstrators who infiltrated the Capitol have defiled the seat of American democracy. To those who engage in the acts of violence and destruction, you do not represent our country. And to those who broke the law, you will pay. Any questions? Any questions about who, who was behind January 6th? Did anyone hear me play any anything from BLM and T for the FBI? Did anyone hear that? Any questions, MAGA? See, this is what they don't want to. This is what they don't want to really do. They don't want to talk the facts. I saw a comment out there. Someone said something about Nancy Pelosi. Well, I got I got Nancy Pelosi and her remarks. Would you like to hear it? Well, let me just say I'm not going to spend too much time on Donald Trump's uh, cognitive disorders. He tried to say that Nikki Haley did not allow the National Guard to come, but it was Nancy Pelosi. It was ne nobody. It was Joe. It was Donald Trump. He knows, and you know, that Mitch McConnell, Chuck Schumer, and I begged for hours for the National Guard to come. He knows that we don't have the party to bring the National Guard. The president does. Sad to say, for the District of Columbia, because every other state, the governor has that power. You hear that? So it wasn't Nancy Pelosi. Again, her story lined up with what Trump said. He immediately uh, employed the National Guard, if you want to use the word immediately. Yeah, 187 minutes later. You see, the problem here, MAGA, is this. And I'm going to be real candid with you. You Trump supporters are the laughing stock of this country. You're an embarrassment to this nation. You're a stain on our democracy. Donald Trump is running the biggest circus known to mankind. And you're all part of the opening act. And the closing act and the act in between. He's the biggest ringmaster I've ever seen in my life. Part of me says, I don't want him to go to prison. I want to see this circus ride all the way until the wheels fall off because, you know, I'm, I like to be entertained. But our democracy is on the line, and so I can't indulge in that. But you know he's a clown, right, MAGA? You know Donald Trump is a clown because he does exactly what a clown does, all right? And let me show you. Let me give you a good understanding of by, what I mean by that. As you can see, Donald Trump... You know, a clown puts on makeup every day, right? Donald Trump does the same thing. He puts that orange makeup on his face. Don't I look so good, Melania? Don't I look good? 
MAGA and you all say yeah. Just like a clown putting makeup on. A clown puts on a wig. <laughs> he goes right here. He puts that bird's and that smack dab right there on the top of his cranium every morning. Clown wears that little thing around its waist with the little jumper suit. What does Donald Trump do? He puts that diaper on and puts on that same crumpled blue suit with the ridiculous red tie. Now he's switching it up. He must have heard Zeus calling him out about it. He tried to switch the color. It's the same crumpled blue suit. And y'all get out here and y'all take orders from him on an app that he, on a web on a platform, True Social. Y'all take orders from this guy. Y'all send him your money every day. He come up with a new way to get you to go into your piggy bank, your bank, your checking, your savings, your 401k. He comes up with a new way every day to get you to send him money. And this is who you guys are calling a successful businessman. He's ran an empire based on fraud, bankrupt six times. Unfaithful to his wife. Got impeached twice in one term. One term he got impeached twice. Couldn't get reelected. Destroyed this country in one term. And you folks will get out here because he represents the fact that you love being racist. You'll excuse all of that. You're all right in his circus, MAGA. And the funny thing is, there's nothing you can say to a person like me or the rest of the millions of Americans who think like I do and the rest of the people on the planet. There's nothing you can really say to us to change our minds. We understand that you're in this cult because you like racism. You can try to hide behind your religious beliefs. You could try to hide behind immigration. <laughs> you know, I used to play Call of Duty, right? You know, on Call of Duty, they got these little little devices that you can, you know, infrared. See, once you got the infrared going, it don't matter what wall you're hiding behind. I can still see you. Yeah, MAGA. You can, you can try to hide behind unemployment. <laughs> you can try to hide behind whatever issue in terms of policy that you want to latch on to. But it doesn't change the fact that we all know what's really going on is this obsession with being able to be proud and racist. <laughs> we got you MAGA and we and you know what even makes it even more interesting is we literally get to watch you have these MAGA meltdowns all over the internet all over the news whenever we start to actually hold your feet to the fire yeah you care about the economy and you care about inflation you can't buy eggs <laughs> you know they their voice cracks when they talk about it you can't buy eggs well, if you can't buy eggs, explain how Donald Trump is raking in all this money. How's he raking in all this money, MAGA? If you can't afford any eggs, where's he getting all this money from? If, if Biden's economy is so terrible, MAGA, how does Donald Trump get in all your money? Oh, I get it. You're just lying about it because... It bothers you that you are having to send him this money. <laughs> the money that you said you don't have, but we all know you do have because of Biden's economy, because of President Biden's ability to get this, this country reopened after Donald Trump destroyed it. That's why you're able to send Donald Trump the money you got. You're all a bunch of liars. And no one believes you. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes my monologue. <laughs> Let's open up the boxes. Let's open up these boxes and hear from those of you who are, uh, you know, brave enough to get in the box and tell the truth and shame the devil. Thank you, Rick, as always, for your continued support. You don't have to, but you do, all right? And thank you to everyone who does send, uh, send the gifts and subscribes as well. You don't have to, but you do. Because, you know, before all of the... Before all of these features became active on TikTok, you know, where you can send gifts and subscribe. Before all of that, I'll be honest with you, I was doing this because uh, I realized there was a need to have ongoing conversations about 
things related to politics. Uh, uh, and so not just me, but there's other other great content creators out there that are doing the same thing. Uh, they don't got to, but they do it because they recognize our democracy is truly at stake. What's really on the ballot this year is this. Do you want to go back in time as a country or do you want to go forward? Right. That's really what this is about. A lot of these people that are voting for Donald Trump, they want to go backwards because guess what? If you go back in American history, you know what was going on. Women didn't have rights and people of color were property. Women were property too. That's where they want us to go back to. All right. And it's really up to you, ladies and gentlemen, to make sure no matter what's going on, no matter how you feel about President Joe Biden. Okay. I'm not saying President Biden is a perfect man because there's no such thing as a perfect human being on this planet. But when you really sit down and think about it and right, you got to treat this like any other job. Who are you going to hire? When you hire someone, do you hire them based because you like them or do you hire them because they actually got the experience to do the job? And when you look at the two candidates that we had and you compare their experience, their expertise, it's a no brainer. Joe Biden makes the most sense. It's a no brainer. So the only thing that makes sense to me is the only reason you would support Donald Trump is because you want to go back in time where you were able to crack a whip on the back of black folks, make them go out there and pick cotton and tell your wife what to do. That's why you want to vote for Donald Trump. And you're willing to throw everything out the window to get back there to you. <laughs> It's water under the bridge. You're all a bunch of sick and evil people. Let me bring up my uh, first panelist. Oh, it's interesting when RC Dub sends Zeus a guest request. Good morning, RC. How are you doing? Good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing. I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm all right. I'm all right. Happy Friday to you. Hey, happy Friday indeed. Yes, sir. You know, I just uh, I want to say I appreciate one of the the main things you always do is talk about january 6th and i appreciate that because to me it's always been one of the most important defining factors about why trump doesn't belong in power why he should not be ever allowed near power again um i think that it's kind of one of those things where even if you could have said to me that somehow trump had been a good president somehow right. he managed through the pandemic properly um, denying a peaceful transfer of power is the basis of our democracy in the sense that our constitutional republic, if you want to play semantics, can't survive without honoring that system. Right. Without being able to say, yes, I lost the election. The people chose someone else. Now, even when we, as the majority of Americans, supported Al Gore or Hillary Clinton. Right. The system made the Electoral College, which is undemocratic, frankly, but because we still have to deal with that system, we honored that system. Yep. No yes. Democrats were convicted for seditious conspiracy after Al Gore or Hillary Clinton conceded. Al Gore was in a position as vice president to make himself president, according to Trump and what he thought Pence could do. Amen. Al Gore could have said, well, I actually won the popular vote. I should be president. I'm just going to overturn the election. But guess what? Democrats don't think like that. We actually honor the system, even if we think it needs to be fixed and any kind of reforms we can do within the system. The right. system itself allows for that. That's why we need to stay involved as people who don't want to see Trump in power and realize the only way to stop him is to vote blue and vote Biden down ticket. And those are the people that actually listen to us about how to fix the system or even yep. foreign policy. They will listen. Biden has responded even to the protests. They will listen. Trump and the Republicans clearly will not. They have their own agenda. It has nothing to do with anything that we want. And the, the, the mere fact that we can't even agree on just a peaceful transfer of power in this country is a big win for any authoritarians like Putin, and anybody that they think that if you want to see what a real dictator looks like, if you want to complain about Biden, move to Russia and complain about uh, complain to Putin like you do Biden. Blame Putin for inflation or blame Putin for starting the war and see if you're allowed to do that like you are here. Because we still have that power here. And yeah. Trump wants to take that away. He's promising to uh, lock up political dissidents, not just political opponents. He's going to make sure to silence opposition, take away the, the checks and balances, 
Project yep. 2025 is a lot about eliminating the thing that kept him from retaining power to begin with. That's why he said he wanted to terminate the Constitution when he lost. That's why they still try to undermine democracy. Mm. It's a win. It's a win for people like Putin to yep. say that democracy will fail. And if you allow it to happen in America by saying, well, Biden's not perfect, you're actually part of the problem. You're giving in to the idea that the system can't work. Yep. The system can work if we stay engaged. They stay engaged for 50 years and they achieved overturning Roe. Wow. And now we need to make sure we stay engaged and have it backfire in their faces and refuse to allow them to continue to do this to us. Exactly. So that I just, I'm going to land there and just say, I, I'm really kind of fed up with the excuses. I'm, me I'm too. I've been pretending that somehow they're, They've always tried to co-opt the idea that they're patriots, and we need to show them that the real patriots would never, ever capitulate to people like Putin, like Trump did in Helsinki, and they would never, ever sit there and try to overthrow an election that was dutifully won by somebody, even if we didn't agree with them. I think George W. Bush getting elected was one of the worst things that happened. Al Gore should have fought that election more. He yep. actually won that election. Technically, he, he did. We stayed peaceful. We didn't try to overturn it. Nobody got put in prison for Al Gore. So just, you know, try to remember which side you're on. Are you going to choose the Constitution and try to make this country live up to its promise? Right. Or are you going to allow it to fall into authoritarian hands <laughs> the perfect candidate that never exists anyway? Exactly. Don't Thank you, you think, so much, man. You're welcome. Don't you think they're, they're being a little too critical of President Biden and not recognizing the threat Donald Trump poses to this country? I think a lot of people have some sort of selective amnesia in the idea that we lived through Trump and somehow it wasn't that bad or it wasn't that big a deal as if 2020 just kind of like the post-traumatic stress from it, we've blocked out how bad it really was. Yeah. And to just pretend that somehow, I hear people say that it, uh, even RFK said he thinks Biden is a greater threat to democracy than Trump. You got to be out of your mind. It was it the brain worm talking. What? <laughs> I don't understand how anybody could look at the situation and think anything in the world or this country would be made better by allowing Trump to get back into power. But, but, but what if you frame it in the context of race? You mean as far as like Trump saying, do you, you, you want the black guy or the white guy? I think he said at one point. Well, I mean, well, is President the way Biden he about race? Is President Biden a threat to racism in this country in terms of the you know, MAGA wants to, to push racism, right? They want to push this racist ideology. Is Biden a threat to that? Absolutely. Biden's been the only one to I've seen as, as vehemently go after the main problem of, of uh, YT supremacy in this country. When you go back to um, Trump retweeting the guy screaming YT power. Yeah, you're already basically exposing what under what the underbelly is. They, they, they think that somehow we're supposed to wait for Trump to come out and say blatantly, I'm racist before we can say, yes, yeah, we told you he's racist. Mm. His, his actions have already proven he's racist. Yep. He's talking about banning Muslims and expanding it again. He's yep. talking about refusing uh, any refugees from Gaza. Till, they basically said Netanyahu would finish the job, let them level it. The guy calls immigrants animals and says that they poison the blood of, of America, but he left out Europe. He specifically mentioned Africa, Asia, and South America. That is all about race. The whole border thing, the reason he didn't want Biden to actually get the border solved is because he needs to placate to YT fear in this country, and he didn't want to lose that talking point. Because mm. I've been living with this shit for 50, sorry, I've been living with this stuff for 50 years and Republicans have a habit of making the border the biggest problem, even when there was no pandemic, even when there was no surge because of climate change issues or us destabilizing things in countries like Venezuela. Yep. I mean, we have been our own worst enemy in some respects. We're basically destabilizing places and they are leaving those places because we have screwed them up. Tell them. To benefit the, the YT system in this country that for far too long has gone unchecked. And that's what Trump and his replacement theory buddies are afraid of. Mm. The whole, even the, uh, the pro-choice stuff that they're talking about. 
most of this is this they're just being uh they're showing their again their fear of being the minority themselves mm. and i'm speaking as a white team male this Tell system them. is supposed to benefit me but it doesn't benefit me when it doesn't benefit everybody if it doesn't benefit everybody equally it's not benefiting me it's Tell actually them. it's actually poison to all of us if it's poison to any of us tell them all right, right, RC. Thank, Thank you. You. I, you know, it's it's always a pleasure to have you come up here and, and speak those facts like that, brother. I really do appreciate it. Well, I, I thank you for having me and having the platform. You do a great job, man. I, I really... try my best. I really do. But ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up to RC Dubs. No lies detected. Yeah, this is what we're doing, ladies and gentlemen. We got we're gonna continue to get the truth out there, all right? Because you know these these supporters out here, these MAGA demons out here, they love to pretend like they don't know what's happening. All right, good morning, Vegas girl. How are you doing? Uh, where where's that individual that said he wanted to talk to Zeus? That MAGA demon. Send Zeus a guest request. Good hey, morning, Zeus. Vegas. Good morning. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? You know what? I'm great. All right, all right, nice. I like to hear when you're feeling good, all right? It's hard to be feeling good out here these days, so that's good news. Well, you know what? If you hang around the right people, you don't have to worry about the negativity. Bingo. Bingo. But I, I just kind of want to say that you, like, kind of hit the nail on the hammer. We all know that the reason why people like Trump is he gave people permission in this country to be racist and to be open, open about it. Yep. And to sit here and say that he didn't, come on. Mm. So, so do you buy their concern? Do you buy their their complaints about the economy no. and the border and all that other stuff? Or do you it, think it's really about them trying to make sure they can continue to be uh, proud and racist? Here, here's why. I, I spent time in MAGA lives. You know that. We yes. Talk about it. And... I'm not going to sit here and talk shit about him, but I'm just going to oh. tell you. I'm just. I'm sorry. Well, crap about going. him. Okay. Thank crap you. about him. Oh. I'm just going to. I'm just going to be open and honest because that's. I feel. Yeah, like that's what this is about. Person. Yeah. You know they don't care about that stuff. You've heard me say that when I said I was going to vote for Trump. I don't care. They don't care about E. Jean Carroll. They don't care about you know everything that they care about. Ha like the border crisis. We know why they don't like the border. It's 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 wrapped in racism. They just don't want to admit it. Mm. And you know that's just how I feel. Yeah. No, you're telling you're telling the truth. And and what about the fact that they don't think we know this? What do you got to say about that? They because they they still try to act like it's not about racism, right? And they want to make it about these other things. But we all know what it is. They don't. But they don't care. It, it, that's the that's the whole mantra. They don't care. They don't care. They, they don't care. Bottom line, they don't care. Because if wow. you did, if you did care, you would realize that the person that you're voting for, that you want to run this country, actually doesn't care about you. Ooh. Okay. Facts. Okay. Look, we all know I'm not a doctor. I'm right. not a doctor, but I'm smart enough to know what a narcissist is. Okay. Yep. Go ahead. Trump, speak on it. Trump is a narcissist. We all know that. Yeah. Okay. A nar he and and the very fact that he says he's not one mm. tells you that he is one. Wow. Okay. Wow. Only a, only a true narcissist would say I'm not like that. Okay. <laughs> You're actually a narcissist by saying that. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I just I just think that especially uh, Democrats, people that are undecided, uh, you know, uh, independent, we really have to focus on this election because um, we don't want Trump. We don't want a narcissistic psychopath running our country. Nope, not at all. And, and, you, you, know, and you know, when I hear people say he's the Antichrist, no, he's not. Trump's not smart enough to be the Antichrist. If you read the Bible, <laughs> he's not. Does he have a spirit of the Antichrist, perhaps? Maybe that's what they meant to say. You know what? If I were to say anyone and his family would be Antichrist, it would be Baron Trump. Oh! <laughs> Wow, that's definitely it. Well, one last thing uh, before you go. All right, uh, you're following you're following the, the the trial in New York. Yes. Um, let's just say that he's convicted. Um, why do you think his supporters will st will will still continue to support him even if he's convicted? Like I said before, they don't care. They don't believe it. 
Look, mm. look, it, let me just say this and I hear my bell. Yeah. When you say, I don't care, you can look at yourself in the mirror every morning. Because if you actually care about shit, you can't actually get up in the morning and look at yourself. I caught that. I caught that. I I'm caught sorry. That. I can't, I'm sorry. I'm a sinner. Sorry. That's <laughs> But um, you can't look at yourself in the mirror. So they, when you say, I don't care, and you keep saying it enough, and that's your mantra every day, mm. you can mm. justify why you support him. Am mm. I, I mean, do I, am I making sense? You're, you're, ma- you're making sense. And, I, and, and, you know, it's one thing when I say it, but, you know, you're an American like everyone else that comes up. When you say it and your voice is heard, I think it has a different impact. So thank you for being honest about it, all right? Because that's what it is. They don't care. No, they don't. That, that's and it's just by me and my experience talking with a lot of MAGA people. It, they just don't care when you bring up any of the, you know, criminal behavior. They don't. Interesting. Care. Interesting. All but right. That's well, a fact. Yeah, I, it's I a don't fact. need a source. I don't need a source or anything to prove that. It's just a fact by having conversations. Yep. And you've had a lot of conversations, and you've gone deep with these folks. All right. Oh, so yes, I, I, I take your I take your word for. It. Yeah, I take your word for it. All right, Vegas girl. Well, thank you so much for having the courage and conviction to be able to get up here and to tell the truth and shame the devil right? <laughs> uh ladies and gentlemen that's vegas girl see what we're doing ladies and gentlemen is we're letting the american people actually testify about what is and what isn't going on out here in these uh TikTok streets especially and as you can tell maga doesn't care they just want to be racist. It seems like it. All right. Good morning, PA. How are you doing? Good morning, Zeus. I'm happy it's Friday. Happy I'm Friday. happy that I'm watching your show. All right. Well, thank I you. I have I'm no happy meeting this here. morning, and I can watch the whole thing, and it's great. Nice, so, nice, right, good nice. Good, 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 good. All right. Well, what do you got for us this bright and early on a Friday morning? All right. It's been a lot going on. Yeah, there's so much going on, right? Where to start? Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was listening to what you were saying earlier about how um, what people really like about Trump is his racism. And it's obvious and it's obvious to me Mm. because I I remember very specifically when he first ran, people were kind of ashamed to say that they supported him. You know, they they weren't out with all those red hats in the beginning. If if you ask them who they were supporting, they were like, oh, well, eh." And you could tell that they were on board with the things that they were saying, but they didn't want to say the name Trump. They were ashamed. Mm. But little by little, he made it okay for them to be blatantly racist. Nasty. And he started testing the waters. I remember him coming down the escalator and, and talking about immigrants. Everyone remembers that moment. Yeah, right? yeah. And they're not sending their best and the grapist and turns out he it's maga that's not sending their best and he's the grapist you know just like you always say <laughs> yeah and that's <laughs> so MAGA funny accusation it's a maga confession and it really truly is and little by little they have been gaining ground this way right mm. like um the commencement speech that uh Butker. Yeah, I, I heard about Gay, that. right? And he yeah. was saying how women really, he's, he's talking to women who have just graduated, who are ready to start their career. And he's repeating these, these Trump ideas of, you know, basically, you don't really need an education because that's their other thing, right? Mm. And Roseanne said that, don't go to university. Right. They're repeating these ideas about don't get an education. You don't really need rights. You you can just be a homemaker. It's okay if your husband cheats on you. That's like the Karen was saying earlier. Yeah, you heard uh, her talking about fine. that. It's fine. I'm not Melania, Ange. so it's okay if, if men feel that they can just cheat on their wives. He's on his third wife. He's cheated on all of them. And, and they, they keep pushing these disgusting ideas that they <laughs> try to pretend like they're Christians. These are not Christian values. What? Where are you getting this from? Mm. So I just see them just spiraling. And, and I noticed, too, that on your live, it seems like there are more and more MAGA demons coming. Because mm. I feel like they're super triggered. <laughs> and they can't stop watching you, though. They can't stop. They, they must be here. Cause... <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know why they come to, to watch this show? It, it is because they've never in their lives 
Uh, and I know a lot of these uh, MAGA demons, all right? Some of them off lap, off, off app, I should say. And I actually got some, you know, that hit a little closer to home. The information that we're sharing out, they never have been exposed to it in their lives. And whether they want to admit it or not, when we're done talking, not just me, other content creators and folks like yourself, they actually have to go back and, and think about it and ponder upon it. Yep. That's why they keep coming back every day. They and but you know they, their hearts are their hearts have been turned to stone. They're dug in, but there are a few out there that are really really thinking about what we're saying and going, huh? Maybe I need to relook at how I'm supporting this this Donald Trump dude. And a lot Absolutely. of them, a lot of my haters, the ones that used to be the most vocals, you know what they've been doing lately? What? They've been real quiet. <laughs> <laughs> oh and you see uh, the person that's actually had to do some work on, on on myself before in order to you know get to this level right i know what it means when a person gets real quiet that means oh mm. <laughs> yeah. i gotta i gotta recalibrate yeah that's good i think they should continue to do that please mm -hmm. if you're if you're maga and you're listening to, to sue just please be quiet be silent listen it's okay to be wrong. Turn turn the ship around. Turn the ship around. Mm -hmm. It's not too late. Do the right thing. Yep. Get your life right. Mm -hmm. and, and make another decision. Yep. Okay, I heard my bell, so I will jump off, but it was great to talk to you. Sue. All right, as well. And thank Have you for staying weekend. consistent and checking in with me. I really do appreciate it. I know I don't get to bring you up every day, but you've always been very consistent about trying to get up here. So thank you so much. All right. <laughs> thank you, PA. Yeah. All right, no lies detected. I mean, and, and these are to me, these are this is this is the truth that you're hearing, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of these Trump supporters that that used to be regulars that they oh, there's going to be this day I get Zeus and the Democrats. They've gone zero dark thirty, and and like I saw that one comment say, reality has started to set in. Yeah, Donald Trump is in prison, and everything Zeus and them have been saying is starting to really happen, and. I would be wise to understand that this ship is sinking and my chances of survival increase if I start to plan as though I understand this ship is sinking. Because if you think this ship that's sinking is somehow the National, uh, you know, the National Guard or, you know, the Coast Guard is going to come in and swoop in and start to patch that ship up and stop it from sinking, you got another thing coming. All right. It doesn't work that way. If you understand what's really happening in this world, you understand that Donald Trump right now is a sinking ship. And I wouldn't I wouldn't build nothing on that knucklehead. All right. Let's bring up our next guest, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, my goodness. All right. Let's go, ladies and gentlemen. I see we got to get to some of our uh, regulars. All right. Good morning, Nutty. How are you doing? Hey, good morning. Good. Great. How are you? Happy Friday. Happy so Friday. To, so to piggyback off RC, RC came in swinging. So going back to the 2000 elections where Al Gore against George W. Bush, if you all recall, that was the really the start of the downfall of the of the people believing in the Supreme Court, because up until that time, the Supreme Court is not supposed to take on any case that has a political question when they inserted themselves in that 2000 election and gave the, the election over to George W. Bush. That was one of the first time in American history the United States Supreme Court inserted themselves in a political question. Mm. A political question is something that has to do with politics for the people in the back. Mm. They don't get involved. They're supposed to be neutral. But when they decided to intervene in Bush v. Gore, mm. that took their neutrality away. Yeah. And ever since 2000, we've seen consistently the downfall of the Supreme Court to where we are today. So going on to um, uh, the, the trial. So Lauren Bobblehead Bowler decided that she was gonna go and support the orange orangutan in New York. The reason why I took offense to that, since she'd be going supporting her own son who's in trouble yep. with the law. Yep. Where is she at defending her, or well, well you we know. know what the good book says, a house divided cannot stand, right? Well, it's apropos because mm. she's standing supporting a rapist and her son is a, a thief and an abuser. 
So it's apropos for her. Kevin, and it's Kevin, our concern because it is our concern. We're American. Sorry, Nutty. Oh, absolutely, it is our concern because she is out there. She's unfortunately an elected leader. I, well, I use the term leader loosely. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Did you see the chaos from last night? Yeah. But Jasmine the Crockett. Chaos, yes. Now, see that two toed sloth <laughs> called Marjorie Taylor Green? She does not know what's coming for her because Jasmine. Jasmine will take her weave off Crockett. She will put down the beat down. Oh, Marjorie, I dare you. I dare you to step to Jasmine like that. I was outside of the committee room. I dare you. That is something that I would pay to see. Yeah. And then AOC decided she was going to get her little Latin butt up there and be like, yo, baby girl. And did you see how quiet she got? She's yeah. <laughs> Because she, she always has, she has that, I always say it, Zeus, the complexion for the protection. Ain't that something? Ain't that but, something nutty? But she's going to cross at the wrong time, and we're going to see laying of hands, and it won't be in the name of Jesus. <laughs> hey, let's go. I am like Takesha at this point. I am so sick of all of them. I am so sick of them. I cannot have any kumbaya moments with anyone who even thinks about supporting Donald John Trump. After four years, after a four year presidency, mm -hmm. all the years leading up to him running for president, you still want to support someone who's been found liable for SA. Someone that's sitting in a courtroom right now, lying to the American people saying, well, well, if I didn't have to be here in New York, I could be out campaigning and knowing he don't even campaign on Wednesdays when court's not in session. Where is he at today? He's not in court today. Is he out campaigning? Nope. He's supposed to be at Barron's uh, graduation. He but I, hear he went to, I, I hear he went fundraising instead. He's going to he's going to Minnesota. A state that he swore that he would no, never go back to if he lost. And guess what? He lost Minnesota. Wow. But yet he's going to raise money in Minnesota. Sick. They, he lies after lie after lie after lie. And these people still support him. And they still want to call Joe Biden a liar. Because the only thing they want to say is the 94 crime bill. Okay, what else do you got? Mm. And let me land this plane right quick. Shout out to the president of Morehouse College, because uh -oh. President Biden will be speaking at the commencement ceremony on, on Sunday. Thank you. The president of Morehouse, Morehouse, wow. The president of Morehouse, period, point blank, end of discussion, said, I will shut down commencement before I let one police officer take any one of these men who are getting their degrees out of commencement in zip ties. We will not be a photo op. Good. If, and he told the graduates, if you want to silently protest, I stand by you. That's fine. If you want to stand up and turn your back on the president, that's fine. But don't disrupt the proceedings. Because if it comes to that, I will halt commencement dead in its tracks. Shout out to the president of Morehouse. Let's go. Excellent. Work. All right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up to my good friend, Nutty Professor. No lies detected. Uh, yes, shout out to Morehouse. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah, I see some dissension in the comment section. All right, there he is right there. Oh, 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 Kevin, you don't got enough uh, viewers. You might as well go get your, your main account. All right, Kevin, and come on back here. You know, it's so funny, you know, none of those MAGA demons have the courage to be able to send Zeus a guest request and to actually back up what they've been saying in the comments. It's so it's so alarming they do that. Good morning, Takesha. How Good morning, sweetie. How are you? I'm all right. Just another day in the kingdom, tending to the affairs as usual. I got an analogy for you, but I wanted to say something before I did my analogy. Ah. Um, There's a guy in the comment, I can't yeah. even remember his name. He said that they are laughing at President Biden in other countries, and they never did that to Trump. Was there not a big <laughs> blimp 
with a diaper on and some hair yes yes in another country when trump yes was yes okay, have you seen any blimps of president biden no no ma'am oh, okay not. so maybe he's confused yeah um maybe he got trump confused with biden and biden confused with trump so i want to put that out there this thank is you for clearing analogy. that up this is my analogy Zeus. and say that me and my husband both wanted to give my daughter my son a birthday party right and the child had to choose between which party he wanted. Right. I want to have the party in the backyard, but my husband wants to have it at an arena. Oh. The child chooses to go along with my party. Mm. So my husband says, hey, I went in the backyard. I see there are ant beds. I've got Raid and I've got gasoline <laughs> to burn up these ant beds because I don't want these ants to bite the children yeah. while the party's going on. Right. And I said, no, nah, you know, those ant beds, they're going to be okay. Don't give me no ray and no gasoline. Mm. So the party's going on that the children chose to have yeah. uh, that I suggested. Right. Into the party, my husband stands on an ant bed. Mm. Ants start crawling everywhere. Wow. They get all on the cake. They're biting the kids. He's sitting there after he stepped on this ant bed with this raid. I don't have any. He's the only person able to get rid of the ants. Yeah. And he's sitting there and sitting there and sitting there and letting these ants bite the kids, take over all the food. Belinda, and I don't you. have the ability because I don't have the raid. Right. And finally, after the ants have bit the children up, Destroy oh the Lord. party, oh eating my the Lord. cake. Oh he my. gets up after he's eating his sandwich and stuff from the party, and he sprays the raid and he douses the gasoline on the ant bed. Mm. That's what Trump did mm. January the sixth. Wow, Eve. You know I call that. They evil. didn't choose him. They chose Biden. Mm. He claims he offered Hillary the National Guard. She refused it. Right. He still had the ability to call the National Guard. Yeah. When he saw the first throwing of anything through the window, he should have called him right then. He didn't care because he wanted it to happen. And the only reason he stopped it was because he kept getting phone calls to stop it. Had no one called, had no one called Zeus, January sticks would still be going on till this day. Yep, they would have they, they would have went and pulled it off. They need to stop blaming Nancy Pelosi, who had no power to call in the National Guard. They need to stop believing the lie that Trump offered the National Guard because he did not. If he was the commander in chief, then you get you telling me Nancy Pelosi has more power than the commander in chief that she can refuse something that he's trying to give to keep us safe. Bull crap. Bingo. Bull crap. He wanted it to happen. He's a narcissist who thinks that everything surrounds him. And the more they pump him up, the harder he gets, even though it don't stand up. But he still gets hard. He gets, <laughs> uh, he gets warm and fuzzy off of accolades. And as long as these people act a fool about him, he's going to get worse. Nasty. They're building a build a bear and don't even realize it. Yep. Yep. Right, right, right. No lies detected, uh, Takesha. You know you spot on once again. Now, that's as simple as I can put it. That That's plain and simple. Even a MAGA could understand what you're saying. There's no they excuse. They don't believe it. Mm. They, ho they hanging their hopes on Trump like a coat on a coat rack. <laughs> and it, it, it's sad at the end of the day. It's really sad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it really is. It's, that's it's just like a wife hoping her husband come back and he done been married to another woman 25 years oh to keisha now that now you know that hit real close to home to 
Somebody that's the kind of hope. That, that's how they hoping. They hoping on a hopeless cause. Oh my God, Takesha. Oh my God, that's a, that that hit home right there. That hit home because you know that's what they're doing. Yeah, they are. They Sad. really are. But that's mm -hmm. all I wanted to say, Zeus. Okay, okay. Well, listen, thank you so, so much, Takesha, for having the courage to be able to come up here to tell the truth and shame the devil, all right? You're welcome, Susan. All right, all right. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give the beautiful Takesha a, a, a round of applause. Now, where's that Where's that MAGA demon that said, uh, Zeus always mutes people? I want you to send me a guest request because I'll show you. I can actually talk to you. I know the truth is not in you, number one, and I know that all you're going to do is whatever you can to try to protect your dream, your desire to live in a country where you can be proud and racist. I get it. That's what this is all about. Oh, oh, Kevin, you got muted. I didn't mute you. Are you behaving with my moder moderators? That's different than me. All right. That's different than me. Uh, good morning. All right, ladies and gentlemen, who we have, Brother Lex. Yeah, I've never seen Zeus mute one person. Good morning, brother Lex. How are you doing, hey, brother? what's up, man? All right. I'm all right. Just another day in the kingdom tending to the affairs. What about you? I enjoy my birthday. Oh, today is your birthday. Happy birthday! <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess we're going to have to sing happy birthday uh, at the end of the show then, right? Are you yeah. going to be around or you got to go somewhere? You got to go to one of your, uh, you know, fancy affairs. You know, I, I can tell. Oh, listen, yeah, I'll, I'll be here, but uh, I, the one question, I got a couple of questions for you. Have you recorded that, worked on that track I sent you? Uh, yes, I think I've sent it back already. If not, I'll go double check. Okay. Okay, how'd you like it? It's it's good, it's good. Keep it going. Okay. Keep sending them. Hey, you know listen, how we do. What I was going to say is Takesha is right. Uh, at this point in time, you're going to have to start, these are uh, adult grown people. You're going to have to realize that these people are not willing to accept any new information at all whatsoever. Mm. You know, if you tell them not to put their hand in the oven while it's on 550, they're still going to do it. That's basically how they're doing with Trump. They're doubling down. And this, this guy that, this guy that, uh, um, Willie's down there in Texas that pardoned that, that, uh, Schmurder. Which That's one? Oh, the worst thing I've oh seen. yeah, Greg, Greg Abbott pardoned uh, that that knucklehead that unalive some uh, a BLM Yeah, Greg report. Abbott, Hot, Hot Wheels is what I call him. Um, Hot Wheels Abbott pardoned yeah. pa pardoned that that guy, and that is the most egregious. I mean, at this point in time, as Riggs said on uh, Union Gang, there's no there's, It's like like the the uh, purge in Texas. Yeah. There's no law and order down there for people to be able to do things like that. Get convicted and then get let go. Yeah. So, I mean. And he these... did that as a political statement, right? I mean, again, appealing to those who promote racism. That's what he did there. Yeah, it, it's Thank a political statement to turn loose someone that has unalive someone when there are people down there that that uh, one, that one, one lady uh, accidentally uh, did something wrong with her voter registration? Am I not correct? Yeah. He got I... five years in prison. Six. This guy commits the ultimate act. The worst thing you can commit in law is first degree or second degree or third degree or H word or M, right? And he's in jail for a year and gets out. Wow. Wow. Unbelievable. And see, they're doing it to us. Yeah. That's why they want us to. That's why they want Trump to be president again. They really want to go back in time. They don't want to go forward as a nation. They want to go back but, in time. But Zeus, you are you are a uh, young, intelligent man, and you do you like like. Uh, well, you, you forgot to add the H for handsome. I mean, let's just okay. Keep well, it you're, A1. I, I mean, I don't do that. Honest, you know. humble. I know, I know, I know, I know, but I gotta help you out when you get to that part in the road and you need a little boost to go okay, around and help I, you get I there. Admit, Okay, you you can be handsome. I don't usually call guys handsome, but <laughs> I'm not one of the regulars, though. All right, you gotta understand. You, I'm you, up here at a really good level. I'll give you a really good compliment. You remind me of myself when I was your age. Oh, okay, okay, that that little well, listen. I mean, I had to. I had to. Easy, easy. That's easy, merch. Let's go. <laughs> oh. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. You didn't I, think I, I was when I really was. I get it, but you know, uh, you know, like I said, this isn't something new to me. This is something that I'm true to. All right, I'm just keeping. Actually, it nice. you do remind me of my younger self, though. For mm, instance. Okay, okay, all right. And all I right. think I'm, I'm probably older than you by probably 15 years, maybe 20. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Well, I guarantee you. Uh, you know. Uh, it's gonna stay that way. It's gonna it's gonna stay that way with Zeus. Though I mean, I've been riding like this for a while, my brother. All right, okay, let's well, continue it. Let's hurry up and get up out of here. All right, then we gotta uh, sing Happy Birthday. Uh, if you're gonna be here, all right, we gotta. Okay, birthday. just pull me back up later on. I'll listen to some more people. But to keep right. and, and RC and everybody, they're so right in what they're saying. They singing. are. But yeah. I'll be I'll be back. I'll, just all pull right. me back up when you're ready. All right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, let's give the birthday boy Lex a round of applause. We're gonna sing Happy Birthday later. Oh, oh, where, where, where did Aunt B go? You said Zoo. You said there were some uncles up in here. All right, I wanted to talk to you, uh, Aunt B. Send Zeus a, a guest request. All right, I think you got in trouble with my mods. All right, don't get in trouble with the mods. All right, all right, seriously. Uh, let's bring up my next friend. Uh, good morning, Ange, the beautiful Ange. How are you doing, <laughs> Shelby? A good morning. I'm, hey. I'm doing better. All right, great live this morning. Then. All right. Oh, it was nice to be back, Zeus. Yeah. I had one of those intractable uh, migraines for two days, and I'm oh sorry, my. everybody, but yes, okay. I am back. Um, so, yeah, we had a uh, Maga Demon in my live this morning. He's been back four times, Zeus. Oh. I think we're going to put him into the rehabilitation program. Okay, good, good, good. How did you get him in, and uh, how do you I, think he's... How, do, how do you know he's ready for the rehabilitation program? Because he told me today he doesn't think he can vote for Trump. Oh wow! Yep. What comment? What were you talking about, uh, to him I, about? We were talking about January sixth. Actually, it started with the E. Jean Carroll, oh. and he said that he said something went on. He said he believes now that something happened to her, and he, and he doesn't like that Trump is trying to take away women's reproductive freedom. Good. Good. Reality Out of nowhere, of this wow. guy said this. So, I mean, sometimes job, if, if you see it in them, you know, be patient. You might bring them around yeah. and, and we need them. But there isn't many of them, but um, I'll, I'll take that. Yeah. Um, here's the other thing. I don't usually share too much, but Zeus, um, my daughter uh, left her husband and I had suspected all along that he was a MAGA demon. Wow. And he was. Oh my God! Yep. He, he is. I suspected it, and so um, I'm happy to get her away from him because you know Good me job, with, with conservative men. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not going to tolerate it. However, hold on. I, I have something. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. I, I, I do. What want, do we got? I do want to. Uh, I have a. Um... <laughs> oh, what is that, Maga we, Man? We have a starter pack for you all. Wow, wow, wow. That's their whole identity, right? Do you see the truck? We the, got the we got the big truck. Wow. We got, we got Chevy. the mullet. We got oh the mullet. Oh my god. <laughs> we got the hat. We got the Bible. Wow, wow. The FJB. Let's I mean, this is sick. Have when your you starter can... pack and get away from us. Yeah. Just take your starter pack and get the hell away from us, women. Um, I read a study that more women want liberal Democrat men like like you, Zeus, oh. big, the big D, big Democrat. Oh, that's true. They're going, they're, <laughs> they're leaning more towards the uh, big Democrats such yeah. as yourself. Yeah, many many should. studies. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah, that, that little starter pack right there, that has, hey, guys, nothing on what I'm Look at that seriously. mullet, Zeus. Yeah, yeah, look, yeah. look at that mullet. And, and they do have that. These yeah. MAGA demons, you see the mullet. Yeah. You know, you don't just look for the hat. <laughs> you got them on the big truck. Yeah. We got the big truck, too. Yeah, er everything's big except where it counts, right? That's the silliest thing I've ever seen, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. The MAGA demon. I tell you, it got these people out to lunch, Ange. Seriously. It, it, oh, and real quick, one last thing, because he's going to cry about it to you. Uh, Retribution did get muted by me oh. because he he spoke on somebody's family so he got a five minute slap on the wrist okay okay don't that's good. don't speak on somebody's family you know i'm i let the mega tears flow that's what i call in my live i bring in the demons bring in the demons i don't care but if yeah. you talk about somebody's family you are going to get a slap on the wrist 
He got a five minute slap on the wrist and he's going to come crying to you, but that's why. Don't talk about people's family. Yeah. Don't do it. Uh, retribution, whatever your name is. You know, yeah, Charles, whatever the hell your name is, you jerk. Don't, <laughs> do not talk about somebody's family. So, for the other people whining about being muted, nah, you didn't. I, I let you go. Yeah. And some of it we shouldn't, but we let you go because it's maggot tears keep them tell flowing. Em. But don't tell talk about somebody's family. I'll, I'll mute your behind real quick. Tell them, and tell them. All right. I heard my bell, my friend. I all righty then. And keep up later. the great work you're doing. All right. You got Thanks my you. support. Ladies Happy and Friday. Gentlemen. Happy Friday to you, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give the beautiful Ange a round. <laughs> All right, all right, listen, uh, I, I seen uh, your majesty. Your majesty, won't you come up in here and, and talk to Big Zeus for a quick second, all right? I've seen you down there mumbling and grumbling and complaining. Won't you come up here and explain, explain why you're so uh, flustered? I do have to say I can tell what time of the day it is just by your show because you talk about the same thing every single day. Am I wrong? Like you're reading a script. Am I lying about anything, though? Yes, everything you say is your opinion. You're not lying, but it's your opinion. Oh, I'm not lying. It's my opinion. Can you give me an example? Um, because everything honestly, everything you talk here, about is your opinion. Everything. You, okay, so let's go down my list of things that I think are going to get Donald Trump uh, are going to cost him the election. Is the E. Jean Carroll thing? Is that my opinion? The essaying, you know, and the money he's paying her—is that fact? Thirty or is that years fiction? ago. So I mean, is it that doesn't really matter. It was thirty years ago. It doesn't matter. No, 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 but is it fact or fiction? That he was found liable for it? That's fact. Okay, yes. okay, okay. So then we're going to go ahead and say Zeus gets a point for that. And okay, Majesty so gets zero. Uh, let me see. I can tell it's 7.50 in the morning when you start talking let, about let, what let, Trump let, does. Let, Every let, single morning he puts on the little hit, the, the, the little wig. Um, no, I call it a I, bird's nest. Well, bird's nest, fine. Yeah, about 7.50 in the morning. Um, you, uh, I can always... Uh, uh, let me see. About seven forty, you're talking about how they all jump into this little box truck and head down to the the U haul, the, the capital, the U haul. The U -Haul yes. Okay. Okay. Actually, you know what? This is kind of interesting. And then, and then, what else do I do? This is kind of actually pretty interesting. And then, well, it's just, I, I I watch your show because I need a good laugh because this is the biggest circus ran by a moronic clown that I've ever seen. You're talking about Donald Trump and MAGA. No, you. No, 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 no. Because you, you, you're a moronic clown. Remember, wait a second. Now you're mad. You are a moronic clown. Okay, I get it. You don't like Zeus. Now, can we? No, get I love, I love your show because it's good for a great laugh. Okay, okay. So during my show, I also said that Donald Trump is running the biggest circus, and folks like yourself are. Oh, I don't opening. think it's a circus. No, no, no. That's what I've said. You remember when I said that yes. you, were go you were going down the path. All right. And so now that we know that between me and Donald Trump, he's running the biggest circus, right? Now you are. No, no, no. Oh, I'm running a bigger circus than Donald Trump. Yep. Mm. You know what I got to say about that, right? I don't care. Okay. So you know that you know what I'm doing every single day. And the fact that you said I'm a moronic, what did you say I was? Moronic clown. And I'm running a circus. Yep. <laughs> what does it say, the fact that you're in the circus with me? I'm, I'm, I'm not voting for Trump in 2024. No, 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 no. You, you come to my show. Because I love a good laugh. But because I never know what kind of stupid shit you're going to say. Wait, 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 wait. No, I don't care. I'm going to say what I want to say. Okay, okay. So, so you can't control the MAGA demon, right? No, I'm not, I'm not voting for Trump in 2024. I don't support Trump running for president. Okay, then who are you voting for? I have no no idea yet. Okay, so you're lying. So you got the MAGA demon. No. And I'm going to need you Prove to control Prove I'm lying. It. Turn Prove your camera I'm lying. on. Then turn your camera on and say it to me man to man. I'm not voting for Trump in 2024. You're a darn liar. Where's the Trump oh, paraphernalia? Prove I'm lying. Go prove to your I'm bedroom lying. right now and show us I that will bedroom vote. doesn't Hold have on. any Trump vote. paraphernalia Just like in 2020. In just like in 2020, I will vote against... The, the sitting president. So, wait, so who did you vote for in, uh, let's go down the path. Let's go with 2000. Yes, I voted for Trump twice, but I think I don't think he's the right person for the job this time. <laughs> I don't think he's the right person for the job so, this time. So you're a Trump supporter? 
No, I'm not. Not, not in 2024. Twice. No, when did you, not okay, in 2024. Can I, ask, can, I, can I ask you a question? Uh, when sure. Did you, when did you decide to abandon Donald Trump? I didn't abandon him. I just don't think he's right for the job. That doesn't make any sense. Yes, I don't think he should run for president. I don't think Biden should be running for president. No, 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 no. You voted for Trump in, in, in 2016. You voted for him in 2020. Okay, these are the three, the four reasons what, why I won't what, vote for what Trump. Event, what event happened? In four your reasons. Life? No, there's four reasons why I won't vote for Trump. Okay. The first one is, is because if I believe Biden is too old to run for president, I then automatically have to assume, uh, believe that Trump... Uh, Your Majesty, you received uh, a, a, a violation. So uh, send me another guest request and come on back up here. Be and, and I appreciate you turned your camera on and let us know where you're getting, you know, where you're at and how you're reporting this, all right? Because this, this definitely helps the algorithm, all right? All right, now tell me when you decided to get out of the cult again. Well, like right, I said, you, there's four can you reasons. Turn your camera on again. I we 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 were enjoying, you know, seeing you live and in the flesh because I've seen you in a couple of lives. All right, and it's nice to see, you know, where the MAGA demon resides. All right, let's go. There's four reasons why I'm not voting for Trump. The first one is because I believe Biden is too old, and I automatically have to believe Trump is too old. Okay, the other three have to do with Democrats. One. If Trump gets reelected, he might as well sit. And I, I have to honestly say it's part of Republicans, too. He might as well sit behind that big desk in the Oval Office and twiddle his thumbs because nothing's going to get done. OK, second reason is the divide that, the Dem that uh, Trump's first election caused because the Democrats revealed their hate for him and split this country in, in half will be so wide that it will never, ever, ever come back from. We will never come back from it. And the third reason is, is because if he's reelected, Someone will make sure he does not serve four years, and you can take that any way you want. Mm, can I can I can I ask a couple of questions about those four reasons? Sure. What about uh, the E. Jean Carroll thing? Is that enough to make you not vote for him? No, it was thirty years ago. So. Okay. What about the decades of fraud for his business? Because you thought what's he been what's he been found guilty of? Well, that's why he owes half a billion dollars. No, he, he was found liable. What's he been found was, guilty of? I said, that's why he owes the money. Because of liability, yes. Yeah. But he's not so found that, guilty So that of means anything. crimes were committed. His, his company, his company was found liable. Okay. He was not. No, no, no. That's his company. And but he, he has to pay. Why do you think? It's not the company. It's him. He has to pay. So let's just keep this clear. He, the E. Jean Carroll, he was found civilly liable. That's in the books. You can go read about the facts of the case. All I, 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 I know he was found he's liable. Digital, I'm not, he's a digital rapist. He's a digital rapist, and what you're saying no, is that... No, he's not. He wasn't found guilty of that. That's, that's what the judge said, all right? He was so not found guilty of it. That's what the judge said. It so, doesn't matter what the judge okay, says. What he about was not the found guilty of, fraud? of it. The decades he of was fraud. not found your majesty, guilty. Your majesty. Remember earlier you said you're not gonna. You're not a Trump supporter? You're not right. Mad, remember? But you're revealing it because you don't have to no, defend somebody. No, I'm not. Somebody. I'm saying you don't have to it, with anybody. Them. With you don't anybody. have to defend them. Where'd you get that with tank With anybody. From? With anybody. If you're not found guilty in a court of law, you're not guilty. He was found liable. That's what happened That's in not a guilty. case. That's not guilty. Okay. Okay. You want to go down this path, Mr. Your Majesty, all right? What's the difference between them? Did he get the outcome he wanted in those cases? No. Then that, that he didn't win. He lost, correct? I didn't say he won. I said he wasn't found guilty. No, 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 no. Did he get the outcome he wanted in no, those cases? That means he lost. Okay, him but loser. he wasn't found guilty. That makes him a loser. Can you say that he's a loser in those two cases? You can, you can be found liable for something you didn't even do. He's a loser in those two you cases. You can be found liable Magic, for Mr. something Mr. you didn't do. Maybe your tank top is squeezing you too tight. Let's keep it clear. Did he get the outcome he wanted in those cases? No. You said no. That means he lost. Okay. That means he's a loser. Okay. But okay. was he found guilty? It doesn't matter. He's yes, it does. Yes, it does. You Moving can be on. found liable for and not be found Moving guilty. Moving on, uh, mister. Okay. You, you know what? You know you what I, to, no, no, do you no. know the difference between liable and guilty? I know what a loser is. And do, you know, loser. do you know the difference between liable and guilty? Yes or no? The answer to your question is yes. What? What's the difference? One civil, one's criminal. Let's move one on. One is you re, you're financially no, no, no. responsible. Civil, the other one is you actually one is did civil, the crime. One is civil, one's criminal. Okay. One, but one you actually did the crime, one you did not. 
Can we can can you stop defending Donald Trump? Who you I'm not defending. I'm defending what libel and guilty are. We're not talking about that. I'm asking about winning and losing because that's how MAGA talks. You talk in W's and L's, correct? So let's stick to that. For the sake of this conversation, Trump got two L's when it came to the E. Jean Carroll case and his fraud case. Two L's. He's a loser. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for just sitting on that. Next question. Uh, the classified documents. That's not enough to cause you any concern that he no. stole American secrets. He didn't steal anything. Here you go defending them. No. Here you go defending if he, him. No, because if he stole them, then every other president that had documents stolen to I'm not talking about anyone but other than your. Oh president. no, of course not, because you you can't let it, you you have to concentrate on Trump. So remember, remember that's your whole that's your whole premise. That's your whole premise. You can't talk about anybody else doing the exact same thing that remember, Trump's done. Remember, and say, I gave oh yeah, you, they're guilty too. Okay, you're mad, Mister Ma Mister Magic. I'm gonna call you Mister Tight Magic. Okay, with that tight tank top on. I don't know where you where you got that from, but you need to get a bigger tank top. Let me get back onto what I was saying. I Why? Because I got bigger muscles than you. No, no. no. <laughs> I know my head's not as big as yours, but I'm not one of these people that's going to come up and stroke your ego. Sorry. You, not you know what you just did? That's a trick Donald Trump taught you, you know, inflating the value of your assets. I get it. But, but this all I'm doing is helping. Oh, you I'm not everything. inflating anything. I just know I'm naturally better at you, better than you. So there's not a woman on this app that believes that you're actually popping in those areas. I promise you. Now, let me get back to this point that I'm trying to make. You told me you had those four reasons for why you're not mm -hmm. voting for Trump. You notice how you said them and I was able to just listen to you and go, mm. Mm -hmm. even though I didn't agree with you about it. I, I had the ability to do that. You, for some strange reason, when I start to explain to you some of the stuff Donald Trump is doing, you can't even let me get through it. You're just, I got to defend him. I got to defend him. Which to me and everyone else that's listening no, it makes it clear you're still a Trump supporter. So when it comes to the classified documents, there's an indictment out against them about that. There's facts of the case that you have read, I would imagine. And you're saying that based on that information, wake up, wake up now, brother. I know this is getting kind of sleep. You're getting sleepy when the truth starts being kicked. No, because you're boring. Go ahead. So when, when, when the facts of the matter around that classified document case got kicked around, you're saying that wasn't enough to cause you to lose any support no. for Donald Trump. Really? What because about I wasn't supporting him in the first place when all that came out. Okay, but you're okay. What about the fact that he took money from foreign countries, foreign governments like China and Saudi Arabia, and Jared? You know what about that? That didn't. That was a cause for concern. There's that happened concern. after he was president. No, no, no. That happened while. No, it wasn't. No, the no, Jared Kushner thing happened after. No, no, no. I, I didn't bring Kushner in, but yes, that's part of it. I said him and his family. But Donald Trump during his presidency, he took in all eight million dollars between foreign governments. That didn't cause you any concern. You'd still no. vote for a person that does that. Yes. <laughs> well, well, well. What about this Stormy Daniels case? Oh, I do have a question about that. Trump is on trial for uh, uh, the. Uh, Changing bank the financial records. I can't remember exactly what the falsifying the, uh, business records. Falsifying business records. What the fuck did her? Sorry, wait, wait. sorry. That is a bad word. I apologize for using that word. That is a bad word. I apologize for that. Okay. Can you control the mag? Is the tank okay. too tight? What did her testimony about their relationship have to do with him falsifying records? It provided the motive. Does it matter that he slept with her? It's not about that. Yes, so it is. No. So no. But what then, what, then, why, I mean, then why ask questions about their relationship? Okay, so let me explain. The only, to you. The only thing she should have gone on the stage to say was, yes, I received let me, money. Let, let me explain it to you in a way you and I can understand. <laughs> whatever happened between him and Stormy Daniels in that room that day, right? Whatever it was, it was so bad that Donald Trump was willing to pay her for it. So? You and I agree on that, right? Yeah. So what? Okay. Okay. People pay off. People pay off prostitutes all the time. Okay. So if I were, to, if you were to pay off, you know, maybe you've done it before. How would you make the payment to them? However, I wanted to. How would you? Would you pay them directly? Oh, probably because I don't have a, I don't have a lawyer or an accountant to pay it for me. Exactly. But so see, did he you... didn't actually make the payment. Cohen did. But then he reimbursed Cohen. 
Because Cohen paid her, yes. Yeah, so... So he didn't pay Stormy Daniels. No. He paid Cohen. But for the sake of how... No, 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 no. Semantics. Cohen paid Daniels. Do do, do you have a... Do you work for a business? Are you on your own business? I work for a business, yes. Okay. You ever gone on a a trip for them or on behalf of the the company? You ever done that? Yes. Do they ever reimburse you? Uh, Mileage, yes. Yeah. So when they reimburse you, that means... You put the money up first, but then they ended up actually making the payment. So for the sake of now that you understand that, you understand it was Donald Trump that pretty much made the payment to Stormy Daniels. It wasn't no. Michael. It wasn't Michael Cohen re- getting a home equity line of credit because he loved Donald Trump so much and he did it out of the kindness of his heart. He did it because he was going to get reimbursed by Donald Trump. So now that we've understood that concept, that's not too difficult for you to understand, right? I know you get sleepy when I start talking facts. Let's get down no, to it's brass. Not, Let's get down to facts. brass tax. Let's get Cohen down to brass tax. I know I'm wearing you Daniels. out. I know I'm wearing you out. No, no, no. And Trump reimbursed him. So you asked me. Okay, you're not answering, answering the question. What did her testimony about their relationship you're not have to do with him falsifying business records? Okay, so if you're reimbursing somebody, on it your doesn't books, matter. This no, it no, should be the no, case no, no. should be. Did Cohen pay her and Trump pay her back instead of, yeah, I slept with him. Yeah, he when I walked into a room, he was wearing underwear. You're talking what the about- hell does that have to do with the case? I'm trying to get there if you can just pay attention. That tank top is too tight. I get it. It's, it's cutting off the circulation up there, right? All right, so listen. If you get reimbursed for for mileage, right, by your by your employer, if we go look at their ledger, what should it say? Should it say... Well- Should it say retainer fees or should it say mileage reimbursement? If you were to take a wild guess. It would be mileage reimbursement. Okay, so that's what we need to see in Donald Trump's ledger. Cohen was acting as his attorney. Cohen made the, hold on, Cohen made the payment (laughs) as his attorney. So Trump paid Cohen back because he was doing attorney things. So it was attorney fees. But there was also more in there. If you want to use that argument, it wasn't, attorney fees only it was also a reimbursement and under no accounting book should you be allowed to falsify the entry of what the true intent of the payment is you're familiar with gap accounting right you know that's illegal to do and that's what the case is about they have to prove hold on they have to prove that that happened her case had nothing to do with or her no, testimony no. Okay, had nothing okay, to do with okay, that okay okay so maybe you're not following it no maybe, you're not following me her testimony had nothing to do with proving that he cooked the books you, uh, yes actually they brought no in, it doesn't not okay, not one word of her testimony I, not, okay, not one okay. word of her testimony let me ask you a question have you ever been in, uh have you been in the accounting side of your organization no okay so when they reimbursed you all you did all you can say is you've been reimbursed that's it okay so we don't need to talk to you about what's on the ledger so that's so stormy daniels is not going to be able to confirm what's on the ledger you know who could confirm what's on the ledger the accountants so the accountants have confirmed that what's on the ledger is a is a uh a, a payment to michael cohen all right okay for legal fees. Okay. So that's what's on the ledger. How would Stormy Daniels know what his CFO has put on the on the GL? How would how would she know? She wouldn't know. So that's a ridiculous argument. So you're agreeing that her testimony had nothing to do with it? No. Okay. I'll tell you why her testimony is important. And I'm going to say it to you again if you would pay attention. Whatever happened in that room between her and Donald Trump was so egregious that Donald Trump was willing to engage in a criminal scheme with Michael Cohen in order to cover it up and hide it from the American people. Do you get that? Because the question is, why are you paying this woman hush money? <laughs> are you checking because your notes? Can. Are you checking your notes? Nope. I'm, I'm actually uh, doing something that's important. So. Like what? My job. Oh, okay. Well, listen, uh, Mr. I hope you've learned something. I'm going to move it on and wrap I will show. never learn no. anything from you. You just did. <laughs> you just did. You no, just, I didn't. You, yes, you did. You got so tired nah. of listening to the truth. You nope. decided to start. You can't, even, you can't even admit that her testimony had nothing to do with it. So, <laughs> Listen, uh, Mr. 
thank you for coming up. Oh my gosh, look at the time, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, oh wow. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in giving a nasty tank top wearing <laughs> uh, Mr. Majesty what he wants, all right? Uh, Mr. Majesty, you have no facts to back up anything that you've been saying. And once again, uh, you've lost to Zeus. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in giving him what he deserves. A round of booze and shame. Oh, <laughs> And so, Mr. Majesty, let me wrap this up, all right? The reason Stormy Daniels' testimony was important is because it helps understand what Donald Trump's motive was for paying her $130,000 and falsifying the business records about it. So that's why her testimony is important. Number two, she, as the recipient of that payment, would have no knowledge of what he actually recorded in the general ledger at his organization. You got to go check Alan Weisselberg. You got to listen to Michael Cohen's testimony. And you got to do the math when it comes to all the payments that Michael Cohen was reimbursed for. And this, Mr. Majesty, Mr. Magic, Mr. Tiny Take Top, whatever you want to call yourself. You just embarrassed yourself, bro. You really did. You're a Trump supporter, and you know it. The easiest way for me to know if you're a Trump supporter is as soon as I start talking about your daddy, you start crying and complaining and putting your face on your, mm, don't talk about, you're defending somebody that you claim you don't love. That's how I know you're MAGA. And I promise you, you will vote for Donald Trump this November. You have no other choice. You know how it is when you're in that cult. The only way out is if you get the ultimate MAGA reward. Thank you, Motive Mikes. And you know what the ultimate uh, MAGA reward is. Jail. And if you don't get your soul right, hell. With a chapter 11 in between. And I can tell by the way you're living, by the way you're living, Mr. Majesty, you're on your way to getting that ultimate MAGA re reward. You're definitely on your way to jail. Uh, you're definitely on your way to hell, but the way those file cabinets and that tank top was looking, you're definitely on your way to getting to chapter 11. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right. I got to get to the wrapping up of the show, ladies and gentlemen. Boy, oh boy, what in the world has happened here? <laughs> Oh my goodness, thank you, uh, OC, thank you, good morning. All right, we'll do a couple of more, and then I gotta get out of here. I'm way past my time slot, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, Shay, good morning, uh, how are you doing? All right, I'll try to get to you attacking as well, all right, and then we'll sing happy birthday. Shay, are you there? I can't see you. Shay, going once, going twice. Oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, Shay, you might want to send another guest request. Come on back. I can't hear you. All right, let's hear it. All right. So sorry, Jesus Christ. Wow. She's having All issues. Right. All right, let's go attacking. What do you got for All us? All right, first off, this has nothing to do with sex. It has to do with the payoff. Michael Cohen was an employee getting a salary. This was an extracurricular payoff. That's why there was a double payment. He took out a loan for $130,000. Alan Weisselberg, hold on here. God, people are so, ugh. Hold on, hold on. Alan Weisselberg paid, showed, wrote exactly how they're paying him back. This, they also haven't shown why by, uh, uh, Michael Cohen was getting this extra money. What legal, what legal issue was, was Michael Cohen doing to receive $420,000? OK, Michael Cohen was a paid monthly or yearly salary employee for Trump. OK, so this extra money, Donald Trump knew about it. Weisselberg knew about it. Trump knew about it. You have um, um, Hope Hicks all talking about what the issue is. OK, so it's not about the sex. It's about creating a fraudulent document for Trump to say he was getting paid for legal issue, a legal uh, um, uh, job. What was legal, the legal fees? Job? Legal fees, was, and, and there was no retainer. Was, there was no retainer. Well, there, there was no. There was no additional job he was performing. There was nothing extra. It wasn't like he was going and 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 litigating something with ABC Company or CDS Company. It was nothing. It was a payoff. It was a scam. Yep. 
everything. And again, it doesn't matter what, what the, the S part was. It was that she was getting paid by Marco Cohen, phone calls, tape recordings, and a handwritten memo of how to pay Michael Cohen back $420,000. And they doubled it so he could pay taxes because this was extra. He had to pay taxes on it so he could be fully reimbursed for the $130,000. So for you people not to listen to what the, what's going on, nobody cares about, about uh, Michael Cohen lying about certain things. He lied for Donald J. Trump. No ifs, no ifs, ands, or buts. He ruined his life, his family life, for Donald Trump to cover for Trump, and he lied about it. Now, the thing is this. If he lies in court now, he can go back to prison. Yep. Okay? He can go back to prison if he lies now under oath. You have Alan Weisselberg, who's lied for Trump. He has now been in Rikers Island twice for lying for Donald J. Trump. So get this through your head. Donald Trump lied to all, that's also including Republicans, American people in regards to this issue. We don't care who he slept with. It's the fact that he committed a crime in regards to hiding the issue just like with every other thing that he does. He hides, he creates his own criminal activity by not being honest and up and up, whether it be with Letitia James and the fraud and the documents, so on and so forth, or Alvin Bragg or Georgia, he creates his own chaos. Bottom line. Thank oh, you, one Attack. more thing, one more thing. Thank you, Attacking. You hear that, uh, Mr. Majesty, while you're doing that work? <laughs> one more thing, one more thing. Takesha is right. We do have people laughing at our president. At a G7 meeting, all these leaders of other countries were laughing at Donald J. Trump. You don't have leaders of other countries laughing at Joe Biden. You have them laughing at Donald J. Trump. Now I'll drop the mic and get out of here. All right, all right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, let's give uh, Brother Attacking a round of applause. We're clearly in uncharted territory, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so sorry I'm past my normal time slot. I really, really am, all right? I really am. I'm trying to make sure I get to the, some of the people that I've been promising I'd talk to before I get up out of here. Uh, good morning, Tiffany. How are you doing, oh. Tiffany? Oh, good. Looking good. Where did Shay go? I was looking for Shay. Ray, 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 you're not you're not capable of handling a woman like Tiffany. Cut it out, Ray. Oh. Oh. Mm, I see him. He's all of a sudden getting a little interested right now. All of a sudden, Ray, cut it out. Listen, listen. First of all, hashtag free the tank top. <laughs> okay. All right. Listen. Okay. We, we, ladies, ladies, oh I know you. You have PTSD from seeing that face on that camera because wow. Ray thinks he okay. was looking good, Tiffany. He thinks, I mean, your majesty was, he thought he was looking real handsome up here. He said his muscles were protruding. He, all I saw that was protruding, no shade, because, of, you know, I have my own little, <laughs> you know, I had a child, though, so I don't know what his excuse is. Mm. Um, so, you know, but I saw that midsection. It was giving, it was giving, it was giving, <laughs> pills, it was giving a little Pillsbury. Yeah. So, um, hi, Ziz. I miss you guys. All right. Um, how are you? That, that was, that was not it. Mm. Uh, yeah, so, you know, I didn't know that, like, barnacles on the bottom of a, of a ship could even wear tank tops. Yeah, I, right? Know? That was impressive, I like, to be quite honest. Was, yeah, so, I, I won't be long, I have to go back to work anyways, but okay. one of the things I wanted to bring up yesterday, and I'm, I know you guys are talking about um, the Eugene Carroll, things like that, but I just wanted to touch on something really quick, because I read, I read something yesterday okay. that basically says, like, it basically said that you can tell when people are very poorly educated because of two major things that stuck out stuck out to me hey guys lack of empathy mm. it, like someone not having empathy shows they're very very poorly educated right? right yeah and second of all you're poorly educated if you're voting against your own interests mm. and Bingo. i just think like seeing and and can we talk about listen listen fellas if you have the word big king your majesty in your handle please stop please like no one's calling you and we have to check on his wife too because you saw he had a wedding ring. yeah yeah 
But you know, he could have just been doing that for TikTok. You know how they like to yeah. get down. These people out here making it up as they go. Exactly. So I just wanted Check to say wife. that it's... <laughs> Check on his wife. Exactly. So I just wanted to say that it's very, very indicative of their education level because they have no way to possibly look outside of themselves. They're the mm. most selfish, bigoted, misogynistic individuals. And that comes down to uh, several factors, but being poorly educated is mm. a huge one. Yeah. Because if you are educated and you are an intellectual, I believe that you will have a broader scope of how to have empathy for other people. Yeah. yeah. So, and and, and to about, think critically, mm -hmm. right? And to be exactly. a critical thinker. I mean, it's it's sad they can't do either of those things. Exactly. And you know, I don't know why he's at why they just stay lying, Zeus. They stay yeah. lying. Yeah. They're always lying. Like he he definitely is voting for you know who. Yeah, he's a Trump supporter. So, you know, I just, I just, it just really grind, it just really grinds my gears. Mm. And you know, and, and and they're so obsessed with you. Yeah. Why is that? Well, because oh, you have to add a fourth H, by the way. <laughs> Hilar hilarious. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. You're right about um, that. Because they're mad. They're jealous. They're mm. very jelly. They, the, even the, the MAGA men, they have jungle fever as well. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, no and lies. also, Your Majesty, um, I'll work on the uh, OF page for you too, because Struggles okay. is adding me earlier too. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Get them. Get them all. Okay. <laughs> they, they, he, he's, not, he's not managing his finances correctly. So, yeah, Thank just go right. ahead and take the little what, bit of money he has left over and do what you do with it. And he was at work. What kind of dress code allows that? Mm. That, that, that take time. <laughs> Free the tank top. I love y'all. Happy Friday. Happy birthday to Lex. And I love you guys. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, let's give the beautiful tip a round of applause. No lies. Check it. All right. All right. I got to get up out of here, ladies and gentlemen. I am so sorry. And we're going to sing happy birthday to Lex. Look at that. I'm well past my, my allotted time no, slot. I got to get up out of here. Yes. No, I got to address that tank top. Okay, let's go. Okay, so when did Trapper Keepers start making tank top? And Post It Notes start making tank tops for busted cans of biscuits. Nasty, nasty, nasty. Now, how the hell can somebody's skin color be the same as the file cabinet? <laughs> it's like he was in camouflage. Oh my God, oh my God. And, I mean, he <laughs> thought he looked <laughs> good. He thought he looked good. Did you hear him say he had his muscles <laughs> protruding? Yeah, he's got muscle protruding like yeah. snacks. Yeah. <laughs> like a honey bun. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Well, listen, brother, we got to sing happy birthday and get up out of here, all right? So, ladies okay. and gentlemen, you know what we got to do? Celebrating a birthday in the kingdom in typical Zeus fashion. Let's go. I heard it was somebody's birthday. Let's go! I heard it was somebody's birthday. Yeah. BJ birthday song. Yeah. Hey.
Happy, happy, happy birthday! I know you've been working hard and keep up the great work, spread the truth, all right? I really do appreciate it. Yeah, hey, I appreciate it. All right. We need, get, we need to get on the phone a little bit later and talk about some stuff. I have another another track for you called I Got a Ride. Okay, okay. Send I'm going to try to get you on a, uh, to appear on a song that I'm doing with another artist, too. Okay, well, as long as it's on the up and up, you know what to do, all right, my brother? Yeah, now, what yeah, are you yeah, going to do? Gonna do? Nothing crazy. All right, now, uh, uh, what are you doing today in order to celebrate your birthday and bring again? And you're hanging uh, out with the family and friends, loved ones. I'm going what are you to, doing? Uh, going to plant tomatoes and try to avoid miscellaneous parties I've been invited to. People are trying okay. to get me out. Okay, but okay. I, usually today, I usually go out to the river and I plant, you know, work in my garden and yeah, and, you know, decompress and you know, yeah. I might okay. go buy some fresh strawberries from the farm up here, you know, stuff like that. Well, listen, brother, stay safe out there, whatever you do. And, you know, if you if you get some nice photos you want to share out, please take those photos. Thank you, Daisy. All right. Now, in the meantime and in between time, Zeus has to get up out of here, brother Lex. All right. And I'll see all you bro, next I, week. Hey, I appreciate you. We're going to do some work. Uh, we just got to, you know, like I said, we got to communicate a little bit. Yeah. We're going to start moving ahead on it. Yeah, and, I uh, agree. Uh, I agree, yeah. brother. Get up with me and... and Tank tops for Jesus. Oh, Lord have mercy. Let's go, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Tank tops for Jesus. Tank tops for Jesus. My, oh, Jesus. my. My, oh, my. All right, brother. I'm out of here. Ladies and gentlemen, brother Lex. All right. Now, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, I got to officially land this airplane. What a show. Boy, oh, boy, did we go well past the normal time slot. You all deserve a round of applause. <laughs> All right, uh, to all of the people who have subscribed and donated to this platform and followed Zeus, all right, to my moderators as well as the panelists, you all really do uh, deserve this round of applause. I do appreciate you. <laughs> Wouldn't rather be anywhere else, all right? But you know what? We got to give out one last round of booze and shame for the Zeus haters out there. These aren't just my haters. These are your haters, too. These are some of the sickest and most demented people on this app. You know, these are people who daily wake up and spread misinformation and disinformation on behalf of Vladimir Putin and the, and the Kremlin. They promote evil, hatred, bigotry, misogyny, racism, and all forms of evil on behalf of Donald J. Trump. They are in a cult. They are MAGA. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give them our final round of booze and shame for the week. All right. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, take care and stay safe out there in those TikTok streets. Don't do nothing I wouldn't do. What a show. What a show, ladies and gentlemen, seriously. Y'all got me sweating over here. Now I move when I'm walking like Zeus. Now I sound when I'm talking like Jackie. All right, OC. Daisy. Cool as a day. Thunder in the sky, light you up like Zeus. Let's go, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, Linda, thank you so much, Rick. Thank you so much. Shay, I don't know where you went, Shay, but I was looking for you. I think I think Ann said the power was out. Donna! Wow, Donna, thank you. Cold as the days. I appreciate it. Tiffany, Reggie! Sticker! XXX. Hey, Lady Rima, Sticky, and Joe Fucking with a Rockstar.
Thank you, man. Have a nice day. All right, Mount Negro, thank you for the lightning strikes. All right, Slick is Rick. All right, let's go. Hey, what is that? <laughs> How did that happen? That's crazy. All right, Grant B, thank you. Harry Bernard, thank you for the subscription. Slick is Rick, thank you for the subscription. PA. Lady Rima, know it all. This is Little Hawk, my brother. Keep it going. Man, I see you. Man, thank you. Swerve, I saw you, brother. I hope you're doing well. Queen, let's go. Daisy, Cali, Big Hawk. All right. If you can't swim, don't be in the pool. Even though I'm hot, people telling me be cool. I'm just sitting on the phone. Garvey, yes. I am Nina. Hey, little mama, let me play with your caboose. I know the ladies love me because I'm sweet like a tooth. Play a hating on the guys, boy, you're such a douche. Thank you, man. Kenneth Jones, thank you. Catching all these sneaks. Annie. Oh, you got the key to my heart, Annie. Thank you so much. Cole as a See, I got it right. Jeffrey. This is how I sound when I'm talking like Zeus. This is how I stare when I'm looking like Zeus. Yeah. You can start as many accounts as you want, uh, Conservative D. You're nothing but a Snuggles graduate. Ask Snuggles how many accounts does it take to handle Zeus. <laughs> how many accounts? I just want to find 11,780. August. All right, PA August 11th. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's how you get a Rico case. Reggie, Tiffany, let's hit him with it. He's deranged. Jackson. He's deranged. Jackson. He's deranged. Jackson. He's deranged. He's deranged. Jackson. He's deranged. Jackson. He's deranged. Jackson. He's deranged. He's deranged. It's Zeus. Jackson. Hey, Donald Trump is indicted and they take <laughs> one charge and they turn it into 36 charges. And he's a big Trump hater. Openly, he's a Trump hater. And his wife is even more of a Trump hater. All right, all right. I got to get out of here, but you know what we got to do. Let's sign off with some... They started just recently with this crap. They started just recently. They could have brought this lawsuit, Bernard, three years ago. Three years ago. Left. It's been... Three years, but they didn't do that, and now they're saying we have to go immediately before the Supreme Court. Right. This thing would have all been over with two years ago, but they waited and they waited and they waited, and then they saw I was running, and they waited, and then they saw I was hot, and they filed lawsuits. These are very dishonest people. That's called election interference. These are very, and now they're fighting like hell because they want to try and get a, a guilty, guilty plea. plea from the Supreme Court of the United States, which I can't imagine because you have presidential immunity, but strange things happen, but they want to get that because that's the only way they're going to win the election. It's a very sick thing, but think of it. They waited and waited and waited for years. In fact, nobody thought, everyone was saying they're never going to bring any charges. They never, most people said they're not going to bring them because they don't have anything. And then all of a sudden, we started getting hit with these lawsuits. And, if, and you know, now they're saying, let's run. You see how he start talking fast like that? That means he's guilty. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I got to drop the bomb. If you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, and you ain't black. That's right. You ain't black. You ain't nothing but a modern-day slave. I'm out of here, ladies and gentlemen. Take care and stay safe out there in those...